Hello, everybody. If it's Wednesday, it's Warhammer, and that must mean it's time for another edition of Warhammer Weekly. Joining me, as always, is my co-host, Tom. How you doing, buddy? Hello, friends. He is my own little chain rasp constantly. He is much like a heavyweight around my neck. He's here, as always. I'm your, I'm your own little spook. <laughs> no, I, no, definitely not. All right, so at any rate... Uh, also joining us this week, a oh, man I'm very glad to see you getting back into the mix. It's Mitch. It's MC One Gamer. How you doing, buddy? I'm good. I'm still breathing. I'm still alive. For all those people who've been asking, <laughs> I did not pass away. <laughs> well, that's that's good. I mean, you know, we'll we'll uh, we'll watch. I expect I expect a Twitter announcement if you do uh, if if you do pass on to the other side and join the legions of Nagash. Uh, I'll expect that we we need some kind of update from the other side. If I do, I better be a sick ass kit made by GW next year. After. <laughs> no chain rasp for you. No fucking chain rasp for me. I better be a grim gas at minimum. All right. So uh, we are going to be talking about Night Haunt today. We're going to deep dive into the ghosts, the spooky ghosts. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about them. I expect about 8,000 piss off ghosts jokes in the comments. I'm sure that'll happen. I'm calling it now to steal the thunder. Uh, I'm fine with a joke. It's just, you know, there's a limit. So uh, at any rate, I too loved that movie. So, but yeah, of course, first, we've got some news. Tommy, what do you got? Um, you kick us off. We have news. Well, yeah, we got, we got some big rumors today. We have kind of a big thing that happened on Monday. Kind of. <laughs> uh, kind of, uh, but we're going to get to that later. Right now, we're going to talk about the rumor engine. Yeah, the rumor engine. Uh-oh. You're talking about the most easily solved rumor engine in the history of rumor engines. Because mm. it is. I, I, don't, I don't know if I agree with that. We've had easier. Oh, you're saying even easier? I don't know, man. This one's pretty easy. Like this is this is low level chicanery. I expected better of UGW. All right, let me go ahead and share here. There's the rumor engine. So, Mitch, what is it? Uh, is it a toilet bowl? I mean, it kind of does look like one. <laughs> Could be the lid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Looking from top down. That's my vote. I'm sticking with it. Gotcha. So. In fact, this one's, you know, pretty easy, okay? Because here's what I want you to do, people at home. I want you to take this image, and I want you to invert it, okay? And then all will be clear. Let me see if I can just... Let's do this. Let's just save it there. And then let's open and then let's rotate okay now what is it can you see it's a mask this is the under part of the eye this is the eyeball this is the little spacey marine things that come down and feed the makey loud noisy piece because this is an emperor's children's space marine mask a noise marine oh ah. I wouldn't have caught that at all. Yep. That's what this is. So, yay, noise marines. The Slanesh marines have arrived. There you go. Just in time uh, for the AOS Slanesh? Exactly. It confirms that our release schedule uh, is probably going to mimic last year. Yeah. Like, Slanesh will get in the beginning of 2019. Yep. That will get our noise marines, our emperor's children, or whatever, at, you know, during the like October, November time frame. And that'll spin into the uh, AOS release probably like December, January, something like that. Yep. There you go. So Noise Marines is coming. The updated Noise Marines. How exciting. That's actually kind of cool. I always thought Noise Marines were sweet. They were like the one kind of Chaos Space Marine I thought was pretty awesome. Especially the dudes that used to rock the guitars. Like that's that's a sweet, that's a sweet army. An army that goes to war like rocking guitars and stuff, you know. They want really to win the power it. of rock. That's pretty good. So, yes, that's a very easy rumor engine. But I'm happy to hear, like, more Slanesh confirmed. We already had, like, 
a rumor engine that was one of the most clear Slanesh things ever in the like just straight up Slanesh Keeper of Secrets claw. Yep. But nonetheless, this is a good one. Cool. Now we know we're getting both a 40k full and an AOS release for Slanesh. The Dark Prince S is coming back big time. And I couldn't be more excited. Honestly, Indeed. I'm kind of I'm I like I hope that the the cycle of it coming out in January is true because that'll give me longer before I have to go buy all that whole army. And then technically I'll still only have bought one full uh AOS army a year. So I'll be able to get in on that technicality, which I'm excited about. All right, Tom, You're back ridiculous. to you, buddy. <laughs> um, mm, mm, mm. um okay. slow week. Yeah, I mean it kind of is. Uh I mean it not really, but um we uh we had the uh FAQ changes. Um actually, Are you, you know really what, skipping the other thing? You know. <laughs> I'm going to do those first. Um, okay, so we had some leaks come out of uh, some from, from from some fairly reliable sources of upcoming armies. Uh-huh. Uh, the, the, the estimates right now are we will likely see in the September, September October time frame, Grotz, uh -huh. which we already knew. Like, that's, like, this is not new news. This is not surprising. But it's more confirmation. I, you are way too laid back right now. Like, did you take some cough medicine before the show? <laughs> no. Because no. you, I, I expected this to be like a a moment of celebration from you to have the additional, uh, to have the additional confirmation of this, like yeah, more evidence I mean, on the pile. I mean, we knew it was coming. Like, uh, and it's gonna be Moon Clan, which yeah, you know, I like Moon Clan. I like Squigs, so that's exciting. Your level of, of just like passive okay with this is I'm I don't know what's going on tonight. You got to no, bring I, energy I, level up, homie. No, like it's I'm I'm not not excited. It's just I I don't know. Like, yay, goblins. Hey. I mean, like, uh, GW has been like, like wowing us with armies. Uh huh. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, we got another one coming. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I just, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe there, maybe we can have too much of a good thing. I don't know. Like, oh my god, you're so ridiculous. <laughs> I do not know who is this imposter. Listen, <laughs> pod person, I'm on to you. Go free Tom from whatever weird alien prison you've stuffed him in and get the real Tom back out here. The real Tom would never say we've got enough releases. You've given away the game, alien imposter. <laughs> oh, your shenanigans. Indeed. Indeed. Have you been told um, yeah. not to buy anything else? No, no. I mean, no. it's his money. Like, right? I can yeah. It's my money. I can kind of do with it whatever still, I want. You it's still just... have some glass panels that are, are visible on that door on you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exact stack some goblin releases you mean, on top you mean of that the, hole for you it. Mean the, you mean in the clock? Like, take out the center? <laughs> yeah, no, or... take out the... <laughs> the door. You, you need some goblin, some moon clan to stack on top of those uh, forts. Yeah, the hell forts. Um, indeed. No, I just, like, I'm excited. Um, and I'm sure they're going to be amazing. Like, I have no doubt about that. Um Okay. Yeah. Well, I would like, expect that if I don't, I don't anticipate that Spider Fang is going to get like anything's going to happen with Spider Fang here. Right. Sure. Um, and like that, like there's just you know there I, maybe there's always a hope that like maybe Spider Fang would show up. I don't know. Like, yeah, because like if we're getting Grots now, it may be a really long time now before if ever we get Spider Fang. Sure. Well, look, here's what I'll say. We'll know more at Nova is would be what would be my answer, right? Because that's yeah, the next big yeah, reveal yeah, yeah. show. It's happening right at the that reveal show happens like right at the end of August, basically, because Nova's over the September or the Labor Day weekend, which is end of August, beginning of September. So, I mean, what I would bet on is seeing a huge chunk of the army there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we'll get a nice preview video of like, we're back, you know, and in, in, yeah, bouncy squigs and the whole deal. Like, it'll probably happen. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it probably will. And I hope it's fun, too. It will be. Like, yeah. they're not going to do Goblins and not have a fun release video. Right, Come and on. that's what I'm saying. Like, it'll be some goofy, like, slapsticky, and it'll be fun. And it'll be exciting. Like, I'm, I'm excited. Good. Good. I'm glad to hear it. 
Um, also with that, uh, we rumor has it that we'll also see before the end of the year another terrain line release for fantasy for AOS. Um, which that's awesome. Um, uh, I you know, there's been a lot of talk of like, are we gonna finally get like the good guy ruins and or the good guy fort, like the good guy fortifications, the new storm keeps. Um, there's been a question about that. Like, is that a thing that's gonna happen? Um, that'll be a neat if it is a thing that will happen. Uh, we'll probably get that if I were to take a guess around November, maybe. I don't know. Uh, the other the other thing that we're hearing is that in November, though, we may there may be a Darko slash Brayher slash Beastman. That's <laughs> right. Be- what coming out of nowhere? Like we've all we've all believed the Dark Oath would be a thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because that it matches the War Chief, and I'll admit I'm kind of interested in that. Like I love that that uh, the Dark Oath War Queen. I think she's super sweet. One of my her and and the the other one. Both of the Dark Oath models are two of my favorite models GW's released in a long time. I think they're just amazing. <laughs> so a whole army like that could be sweet. But then then this Bray Herd thing popped up. And I, Whoa! Sneaking the Beastmen in on us. Uh, hey, okay. Uh, I am. I am strangely excited for that. I mean, I have a, a small-ish Beastman army. Uh, I've never been, I've never felt the great need to expand it because I don't, I'm not super in love with like their, their base models. I love all the monsters and minotaurs and stuff, you know? Yeah. Uh, so the idea that we would suddenly get more new cool Beastman models. Okay. All right. I might have to take back that thing I said earlier. But it wouldn't be a whole army I'd buy because I already have part of a Beastman army. Right. So I'd really only be being some kits, buying some kits. So like mm-hmm. that's legit. I'm still I'm still okay. One one full army a year. I'm I'm all right. Okay, I made my peace with it. I'm good. The, but the Beastman players, the people who've been keeping that candle lit, man, they they deserve this. I know a few people. <laughs> I know a few they people deserve this. No, no, they do. I know a few people who I I, I know I have one guy in the uh, local region. The guy has won maybe one game in like a decade. He he's just he only plays Beastman, and I oh. think he's I think I just he'll, be, like he'll be very happy. What? It just seems like you made a mistake. <laughs> Look, he, he follows his heart, Tom. Okay. I uh, I I know I get that. Yeah, your heart your heart being a black, cold. <laughs> empty chunk of coal that only seeks to see suffering on the faces of your opponents wouldn't understand the aesthetic approval. Hence something we're going to talk about later that I saw you discussing on Twitter earlier today, but we'll get there. We'll get there. You mean the heart, my heart that desires to, to excel and exceed. Sure. You know, whatever you like. My opponents. And However you want to phrase it, Tom, however you want to phrase it. All right. So yeah. Sorry, and then obviously we'd have, sorry if I like right. winning Vince. You should apologize. That's fine. It's not that you like winning. It's that you like it's that you like winning in bad ways. There's a difference. That's that's all I'll say. Cue, cue the Conan quote. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. I like hearing the lamentations of Vince from my sectors <laughs> say no to Archeon. We'll talk about that in a minute. Like we'll we'll we'll, we'll cover that. We'll cover the most depressing moment of, of my Warhammer career in like the past two years. And a little later. <laughs> um, and what else? Uh, yeah. So, uh, in the app. So that's what we're saying by the end of the year. And then it, lo- it looks like we'll probably be in a, a launch of Slanesh in January. Yep. Which again, like, doesn't seem real. Too surprising. Like, we knew that she. We know she's coming. He, she, or coming. It followed. Like, it. It really is like fourth time's a charm. Like, yeah. are we surprised? Like, sure. yeah, honestly, yeah. are we surprised? Well, GW has proven very frequently that they don't need to follow any pattern. Like, you think they're going to do something that you think they're going to go left, they go right. Yeah. And they're but, like, left, left. But left. this is truly a square. Like, this is really like <laughs> four lefts make a square. Yeah. This one's not surprising. Sure. That Beastman thing, though. Come on now. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, yeah. That's right. out of left field. I hope yeah, that right. pans out. Yeah, no, that's good. Um, okay, the FAQ dropped. Um, and with it, like, all of the things. Um, tons of fixes, tons of things that needed to happen. Um, 
I mean, do we really want to go through everything? Like, We're going to dig like, it. What? We're going to get into it, son. That's what we do. We're going to talk this through. Let's go. Tuck in. Here we go. First off, overall impressions. Almost all the good stuff that we needed to have happen happened, right? Like overall impressions yeah, were yeah. exceedingly positive. They addressed, I, I think, pretty much every issue that was out there or, or darn close. Like uh, when I look at the two pages of changes, like of our collated changes, yep. There's like two in two pages that I, yeah, I agree. That I take issue with. I yeah, completely agree. There are exactly yeah. two. Yeah. Everything else is great. Like, I, like obviously, like Croak took a big old kick to the junk, and he, he like croaked. it's you know, he, he croaked. Uh, uh, you know, like it's yeah. There were like yes, some stuff was hit pretty hard. I'm not gonna you know I'm not gonna discount that at all. Um, but there were two that I would say that I you know you know that would were were rough. A lot of them were expected. Um, you know, a lot of the commandability stacking, all that stuff was fixed. You know, they clarified just some sim simple stuff like um, name characters do not have to have an the name characters like do not have an artifact of power ever, even if like one of their abilities is an artifact. Sure. Um, so they don't ever count as that for like game mechanics. Um, and then they did, you know, like they put the nail in the coffin for like the ever chosen battalions. Yes, you can play them, but everything counts as allies, which means you can't play them in 2000 point match play. Um, in anything but like generic chaos, not even in ever chosen, ironically enough. Um, yeah, we, we should be somewhat organized about this because I, I really sorry. do want to touch on, on some of these. Um, okay, all right, so let's talk core updates, right? Yes, the, the big yep. deals. There's a couple yep. little nuanced things that I'm actually really happy they addressed, like they clarified things like assassins are not in reserve, right? Yes. So, in other words, hidden models, models hidden in units, fanatics, assassins. Yep. Etc. are not in reserve so they can still be hidden in missions like total commitment right that was a sort of gray yeah, and, it, and it turns four and five yeah 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 so that's that's good okay um they they clarified that the double lock is real we're going to talk mm -hmm. about that in a minute we'll come back to the double lock mm -hmm. and stops pile in we'll talk about we're going to deep dive on that one uh the uh they clarified allies. Allies are any units that do not have the allegiance keyword other than endless spells or terrain. Cool. Yep. Right? Yep. They clarified that uh, units, that such units in a battalion, such as like the Order Wizard, blah, 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 you know, in, in like the uh, Sylvanethi Battalion or whatever, yep. right? The All those things where it's a battalion that's in a book that allows you to kind of mix armies, mix factions. Yep. Those things uh, count as an ally, but they don't count against the number of allies you're allowed or the points limit of your ally, but allies, but they do count as an ally for all other purposes. Like they can't have items. They can't take your spells and right. all that stuff. Right. So that's good. Um, then there's the two things that are very interesting. First, they clarified that if a unit is like battle line, if, which is what we call it. Right. But it's not the official yep. term conditional battle line, whatever you want to say. Right. Yep. You, you can't take the generic allegiance ability and retain battle line if, right? Yes. However, and this is this is the thing, and this is one of the reasons I kind of wanted to deep dive on this because this to me is a big deal and it's something I've seen people have questions about. So I wanted to really sort of explain it. Is if your army has an allegiance, like you can, you can make a faction allegiance, but they have no allegiance rules. Swift for example agents. being... What's that? Swift talk, Swift talk agents. Sure, Swift talk agents. They give the example of Eshin. Like for right now, Moon Clan would be a similar example, right? Gutbusters. Yeah. What's that? Gutbusters. Sure, mm -hmm. Gutbusters. Yeah, all of those, right? Where they they clearly have a functional army, right? And you can make an army in that yeah. faction. Like they have leaders, they have battle line, they have they have an army, right? But they don't have um, but they don't have any allegiance ability. Right. You can then you can build that army, retain that army's rules, and look up and use the Grand Alliance allegiance abilities. So your gutbusters can use generic destruction, still retain their gutbuster stuff, like their battle line if blah 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 and all that. Your Eshin can still have night runners and gutter runners as their battle line, but use the chaos generic abilities. Yep. That kind of stuff. I love this. 
this is like a change I was very excited to see that they that they sort of split this out and clarified like if your army has an allegiance, you must use that to retain those other things. Yep. Cool. Simple. I was a nice little, you know, unnecessary but very appreciated boost to the rest of that stuff. Not that it's going to make any of them hyper competitive. It does not. But it makes sure. them at least playable, right? Which is right. like, okay, fair enough. I just asked for working rules that I can put them on the table. That's all. Yeah. You know, you know, better than the ever chosen situation. Right. Right. So yeah, that was a, that was a big one. Uh, okay. Uh, banishment, maybe my favorite fix of all of the changes. Yeah. It was such a, it's such a finesse touch. Yep. It was like just the right touch. Yep. And, and the change is simply your opponent now sets up the unit where they want instead of you setting up the, the unit within the, within the restrictions allotted by the spell. Right. Yep. Okay. Great. The, the spell now does what it wants to or what it's supposed to without like breaking the game. Yep. Uh, by the way, I want to give, can I do two? I want to interrupt our, this real quick to do two quick shout outs. Okay. okay. So first off, I want to shout out Velatron, who I know is in the chat, who took uh, best army at throne for, for his beautiful army. Congratulations. Well earned, well deserved. So shout out to Velatron. Uh, second, I want to shout out to our former guest, Andrew, who had come on the show and who I understand was upset by the, the ever chosen battalion changes and was looking to sell his army and is very upset by a lot of things with, with Archeon and, and other things. Let me just say it gets better. <laughs> it gets better. Uh, uh, so the, uh, you know, what I would say is, Hang in there. Is hang in there, yes. And certainly do not uh do anything crazy like I mean if you want to sell your army, sell your army. I'm not gonna tell somebody whatever, just get a new army. But um but at the same time, don't do anything crazy with your Archaeon, homie. He's a beautiful, beautiful baby. And he has lots of great uses. I'm I'm about to build my second one, so I don't know what you're like, don't don't uh don't turn your back on the Lord of the Apocalypse, despite his terrible performance for me this last weekend. That's okay. All right. So now back to this. Okay. Cool. Let's keep going. Keep going. All right. Umbral spell portal. Wabam! <laughs> Smacked in the face. One spell per phase, and an endless spell can only go through once, and the and it doesn't move afterward if it goes through, and it shuts off the portal. And also, endless spells don't get affected by the enhanced range. The enhanced, like, in bonuses to unbind don't apply to bonuses to dispel. Uh, so, like, but if your caster casts a double range or has a bonus, none of that applies to endless spells. They work at the range they work at, and you can't set them up or target them from other places. So you can't, like, summon your thing on the other side of the spell portal. It has to kind of just go through. So that's a lot of stuff there. Yeah. Um, the spell portal, obviously... It was challenging in its former version. I'm happy to see its teeth get kicked in. Um, uh, the uh, Geminids can't affect the same unit with both Geminids. As somebody who just got a unit get affected by both Geminids this last weekend at the hands of I don't Tom, know what you're talking about. I'm happy about that change. Uh, it is crippling to a unit when you get plowed over by both of those things. So that's fine. Uh, it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's 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 brutal. They're brutal. Um, the Hydrox skin cloak only checks on normal movement. So sadly, the uh, keeper, like the sort of flying keeper of secrets, who moves like eighty million inches and like <laughs> moves over you, charges over you, piles in over you, piles in over you again, because she, she can end up doing this like four to five times around, checking for mortal wounds every time. No longer works. Because she's she's piling in six inches too, so she only has to like she can easily hop in and out of the unit. Um, yeah, like as as has been pointed out, the umbral spell portal I think still has use even with only one spell for forty points. Like I think it's still whatever. Um, the lens. I don't know. Oh, do you think it's worth sixty points though? No, I think it'd be better if it was a forty. Like I think eventually what you'll yeah. see with the spell portal is it'll get adjusted down. 
right? Like yeah. one yeah. spell per round is there, there's a use to that. And like I know the hand of dust thing, blah blah blah. I don't want to whatever. Okay, whatever. Uh, yep. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that. That can't be what everything is done. Like putting one spell through there is perfectly legit for the most part. So like I feel like what'll eventually happen is it'll come down on points, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh so the uh the lens, the I mean, it was the best item, right? It was. Yeah, like I was trying to reorganize Daughters of Cain lists to fit it in. Yeah, because it was just it, it was just like, well, my army doesn't get affected by spells anymore for the most part. Right, right. <laughs> I took I took this army is immune to magic. Um so yeah. you know that's pretty Yeah, good. they just they just shifted that from like every army has that option to just Sylvaneth now. Sure, sure, sure. Well we'll we'll get to that in a second. <laughs> uh but the so now it's just one spell per battle round. Per battle round. They really went all the way. So just in case you sneak some, something gets snuck off somewhere else. Uh so yeah, that one got hit. Good. Uh all right. Let's see. Uh, there was a little change that, like, um, the models slain by endless spells don't count toward battle shock in that following round. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, so, like, like, you can well, you can get Marathi, right? I you know. Can get three wounds like, on her beforehand, this, and then three wounds during the pulled, round. Like this pulled her off of my like lineup. <laughs> this alone. <clears throat> Yeah, well, like, like I, I was already on the fence on her, but when suddenly I'm like, okay, she could get gigged in one turn on foot, I was like, nope. Not happening. Like, she, there's 480 points for that. It's not worth it. Eh, I'm okay with it. I Like, most characters can get gibbed in a turn, and she does a lot of amazing stuff. I'm okay with it. Um, pendulum can only move one direction, i.e. forward. They can only move one direction, like the band one direction. That's where they're going. It's going one direction, just straight ahead. Or if you set it up and move it backwards into your own line, it could keep going into your own line. If you really wanted to, you could just plow it right into yourself. But it can only go on a straight line, the one direction you initially say it's going in. Um, okay, that's fine. They answered yeah, the that other one. I, I would. Uh, I want to just jump back to that we skipped was. Um, that uh we said that things don't that don't extend the range don't uh extend we talked about this one yet or do we yeah we skip? they also don't extend extend the range of endless spells like yeah yeah, yeah. so like again uh, marathi oh, again marathi just took yeah. another hit yeah <laughs> like that's another one like those were the two things and i was like oh a whole lot of nope um like arc arc in, arc in the black correct uh, like yeah. yeah yeah his six inches doesn't extend endless spells now yeah right um, and you can't spells learn endless have the spells. They have listed basically. He's been lying yeah, to his wife learn... that time anyway. <laughs> you can't learn endless spells if you didn't pay the points. Uh, for me, like I thought, there would have been a fun zinch list in there um, with uh, like Kersling and uh, Alas. Uh, we can't do that now, which makes it really sad. That's fine. Um, I mean, I. I'll have a suspicion if we meta talk later, but I, about endless spells. But whatever, we'll see. Um, and then finally, they clarified that unbinding is measured to the caster, not the portal. So you can still use the portal, which is the other value of it, right? You can to, to get out of range to, to stay out of range yeah. of unbinds. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and that is that cool. yeah. Yep. Uh, let's see other big stuff. Uh, all like most of this, we already said it, but like most of the stacking stuff got cleared out. Right. Yep, like stacking stuff. The uh, e uh, the evokers gained like lore of invigoration, which is yeah, a nice. Yeah, they spell. One of the best units in the new release got better on clarification. Oh, good! <laughs> this whole chamber, shut the door. Just shut the door. Put them back. I don't want them. Yeah, you know like I, I ran five on foot this last. Vince is alluding to this game. I ran five on foot this weekend, and uh, they they're worth their points. Yeah, they they're not even really the ones that honestly bother me, but sure. Right. They're just no, more valuable right. on eBay for the ones that I'm selling. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Uh, uh oh, yeah. go ahead. No, go ahead. Okay. Notable exception to the stacking, as was just mentioned in the comments, was that the WA was clarified to still be able to stack as well it should. <laughs> it takes a lot of work to make that happen. Like you gotta have all the units, they gotta be in range, then you gotta roll the die yes. and it's still gonna work. Uh, it's a conditional. It only lasts that one turn, 
right? Like that is to right. say the law doesn't go till your next hero phase, like most stuff. Um, so awesome. Uh, if anybody can stack attacks, if anybody can have a stack attack, it should be the Iron Jaws. It's it's Du Bois. We I don't disagree. I don't disagree. Yes. Um, that is thematically apropos. So there we yeah. go. Um, you know, the one change that I was the most sad about, but like was the most obvious thing coming. What's that? Karanak now has to pick an enemy hero to hate on to summon his unit of dogs. Yeah. He can't, he can't yeah. pick a friendly hero. Yeah. <laughs> we knew it was oh. going to happen. Sure. I know. Yeah. Uh, Fire uh, Slayers, uh, if the general, like all the command abilities, like required the heroes to be a general. Yep. And that got removed. So that got moved to generic, which is good. I mean, uh, I'll say that like Fire Slayers, um, I was definitely not hot on them after the change. And this is a, like a, a nice little bone that they threw them. So yep. that you, you know, if you field multiple heroes, you can get to use all their command abilities if you spend the points. Okay. Yep. All right. The good deep kin, you can't set up the ships next to each other. The ships have to be six inches yep. away from each other. So the no more like wall of boat. <laughs> yeah. Who would do that? It's ridiculous. Yeah, <clears throat> Gary. All right. So anyway, um, at any rate, uh, now let's talk about some, let's go in, in order of, of, let's get to the controversial ones of sorts. I don't okay. know, for, for different reasons. Okay. Yep. So yep. Seraphon. Yep. All right. Lord Croak. Cast a spell three times, eight, nine, ten. Picks three units, roll a die on a two up, D3 mortal wounds. If they're a chaos demon, becomes three mortal wounds. Obviously that got weaker. Okay. Yep. Ouch. His impeccable foresight, he can't use more than once. Roll three dice Which, every four up as an extra command yeah. point. Sure. Yep. The Saurus Astroloth Bearer doesn't stack anymore. Right? Which, I mean, like same bonuses from same sources. That's not surprising. They've sure. repeatedly shown that you don't they want they don't want you to stack the same thing multiple times. By using the any term, yes. Like yep. sometimes they'll allow it, right? But it's yep. not always. Yep. Um famously Iron Jaws do break that rule too. But hey, we've only got yep. seven units to get off our back. Um the uh, Lord Croak, for any other purpose than being slain, he's treated as having a wounds characteristic of seven. Thought that was a nice little, yeah. little change. Uh, now it's time for the most controversial Seraphon Lizard Man Slon change: the Skink Starseer. <laughs> okay, so for those mm -hmm. who didn't play against the Skink Starseer, Poor guy. Um, would you like to explain how this rule, how the Skink Starseer's rule worked previously? Yeah, it's a fun little dice game. Like you go, hey, I have a dice, and I'm hiding a number behind my back. And if you get that number, if you guess the number, you get that many re-rolls. If you don't get the guess the number, I get as many re-rolls as are on that dice number that you did not guess. Right. Yep. This it's, was such was, a fun mini game. Uh, it was so good. I Just love like, stealing I people's re-rolls. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and four is the right answer. Well, it depends. You got to read. You got to read the table, right? It's it's a yeah. it's poker. You've got to read the table. Like it truly was yes. a bluffing game, right? Yes. And so, is your opponent the type of person who is going to go six because they're crazy enough to go six every time because they know you think they'll never pick six because it's too obvious? Which that's a, that's some people's strat. Are they that type of lunatic, or yeah. are they the person who's trying to like back and forth you and they just go four? Because those were always the two options. Yeah, like four and six. Like Jacob Berry, for example, is a six guy. Like yeah, huge he just picks six every time. He should pick six every time. Um, Good old but luck. Yeah. But yeah, if you were the rest of us, we'd pick four. Yeah. So now that went away. And now it's just like they roll a die. And on a two plus, you get a command point. On a one, your opponent gets a command point. It's so... Womp, womp, womp. <laughs> womp, 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 womp. <laughs> Okay. But, the, but the points for these two guys didn't change. Uh, no, I don't, don't think so. Not that I know of, no. Croak, no. Should have gone, should, Croak at least should have come down a little bit. Uh, I mean, he's still really fine. good. He's, he's still good. Still really good. I don't know. I think like, I know. Seraphon players don't want to hear that. But well, like, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not like, a, I'm not a Seraphon player. I know. But I, know. I, I, do, I, do, I do think that he probably doesn't feel so good. Sure. I would call him okay now. I would, yeah. I mean, I'd still consider running him. That's all I'd say. Would you? Would you run him more uh, as opposed to a regular slot? Maybe, maybe it depends on the list. If I can get him in the, if I can get him in the list, yeah. I think the double slot is a better list. Maybe, maybe. I'm all not right. saying it isn't. Sure. Uh, the engine of the gods summon still summons exactly what it did and how it did. It's just they can't move after you summon. Yeah. Okay. Yep. 
still pretty good. And the Ripper Dipper Doos, we solved the problem of the infinite ones thing by simply overriding the ability with a new one that says if that if that attack hits, you generate D3 hits. So GW has really leaned into this, like, you know what? I'm just going to rewrite the ability. Like, yeah, I don't just, care if the scrolls, how many times it's been printed or where it is. We're just going to get rid of it. Yeah, like, they've really leaned into rewriting War Scrolls. Good. 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 <laughs> I'm... If it's look like look some I, I prefer that they fix most things through points, okay? Right, right. But sometimes that's just not appropriate, or it causes a problem. If a rule's bad, sometimes you gotta just print a new version. Like, admittedly, it's not a huge number of things they've done that to, right? Um, if you don't count like the the stacking addendum added onto everything, if you count that, it's a lot. <laughs> admittedly, <clears throat> all right. Look, we're not gonna talk about your dumb dwarves, okay? Now let's talk about the controversial ruling. Uh, Sylvaneth Wildwoods, shall we? Okay, so there was a raging discussion. Do the Sylvaneth Wildwoods inherit the overgrown wilderness rule of the base Citadel Wood? Hence making them impossible to see through. Right? Yes? Right. Right. Okay, because the rule for a Sylvaneth Wildwood, I'm paraphrasing because I don't have it in front of me, is like you draw an imaginary one millimeter line between the two things that need to be tested here. And if they pass through more than an inch of the Wildwood, then line of sight is blocked. Correct. Is that more or less correct? Yes, there is an exception to this that nobody talks about. Okay. Um, if either... I think it's if either unit has flying, ignore this rule. Oh, that's on the on the base wildwood. Yep, on I the mean, base. I'm gonna, double check. I'm gonna grab the. I'm gonna grab my book. But yeah, I believe yes. that's. I believe that's on the base wildwood. Okay, cool. So like, with, like honestly, it isn't the end of the world for most things, um, but it will definitely change the math of how things are valued. Um, sure. Where to go? So, uh, yeah, this scenery rule does not apply if either model can fly. Okay, got it. If you or it has fly, ignore the rule of line of sight. Interesting, interesting. So, yeah, that's that's fascinating. Just because, like, whatever. Do you remember when I asked you this uh, on Monday, Vince? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we talked about this. It, it, <laughs> How, no, like, how, is there what ways in Warhammer are there to give models fly? <laughs> this is the math that I was doing in my head sure. of finding ways to, to negate this. Yeah, I mean, uh, Zinch I, just became a lot more viable. I don't like the I don't like the Wildwood change at all. Like, I don't like it inclusive of that rule. Now, Wildwoods are not the easiest thing to get down on the board, right? Like, to be fair. <laughs> sure. There's yep. a distance you have to place them from other terrain. They can't yep. sit on other terrain. They can't sit on other models. Right? So it's not like you can just absolutely flood the board. Right? Um, and your, your sort of initial woods are going to be limited by a lot of other stuff that's on the table. <coughs> Nonetheless, uh, it is interesting that... Uh, they that those woods can shut off so much stuff. Now I don't even personally care. Like I don't use armies that shoot much, but those right. woods are you just use armies that cast spells. I, no, not if I can avoid it. I hate spells, as as was proven this last the last game we played. Anyways, um, yeah. like sure. So the point that you're saying because line of sight is blocked in the woods as well, right? Like that's being the whole idea. So if you can bunker a unit into it and basically have an inch around it, they be suddenly become immune to shooting and magic, right? That isn't from a flying thing. Right. Yeah. Right. So if like they put a unit of Kurnoff scythe hunters on that objective, um, they're they're getting cover. They're on rerolls <coughs> and they're untargetable unless you whatever shooting at them has flying. Can you do that though with the trees? Can you get a three of those Kurnoff hunters? Oh, at least yes, because minutes. it's three because it's three like it's two to three citadel wood spaces um and so yeah they can be stretched out across that farther than one inch from the edge 
Um, and if you plant that right on the middle of the objective. Yeah, three um, will fit in a single wood, but they won't necessarily have an inch. Yeah, and you oh, only wow. need an inch on one side. You don't need an inch on all sides. You only need an inch right. on the side where their unit right. is. Right. Well, where they're drawing line of sight from, yeah. Right. And the, one, and the, the second one, to the other side. And the second one can shield you that. from that, right. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, it is... What I don't like about it is it's so oppressive to certain armies and so completely nothing to other armies. Woods themselves, Sire, the woods themselves sorry, are... Sorry, Ironweld Arsenal. Well, I mean, whatever. Who cares about them? Um, no, I mean, like... Free peoples? I, I mean, I, I, I know I just built a whole army of that in a week, but I don't, I'm not, I'm not care. I don't care about that. Um, no, I just mean like, I hate the Citadel wood kit itself. Okay. Like, cause they've clarified, you can't move the little circles where the tree are. Like those right. are basically impassable. Right. Yep. And that kit is so ridiculous to navigate. Um, just like with, with, with that, when people, when Sylvaneth players stick their crap in the middle, it's already going to be a problem getting in them on melee, unless you have tiny little like twenty five mil right. base dudes, yeah. right? Like if you've got a horde of twenty five mil base dudes, hey, you're great. You zip on in there and you tear those guys apart. So yep. congratulations, yep. armies who have hordes of twenty five mil base dudes. Right, big win for you, daughters of Cain. Yes, and and like I don't know, chain rasps are on a are on a uh, twenty five, right? Oh my and god, flying. Ch so chain rasp though inside those woods. Yeah, they don't benefit from cover, but suddenly, you know, like, I mean, it's gonna, you're not going to get 40 who are all blocked from line of sight, but sure. You barely get them in there with all the fiddly stuff that's going to get caught. Yeah. And, you know, these things can be put on top of an objective, assuming there's no other terrain or models already there, right? So you can, you yeah. can alpha bunker your trees on the objective if it's sitting in sort of the middle of nowhere. And then your units can easily move in. Like, there's... we're. We're, we're not going to do our Sylvaneth show now, but there are plenty of extremely viable one-drop Sylvaneth lists. Yes. Yeah. Right now. So they will be able to set up woods, perhaps summon more, maybe, maybe not. Like, again, tables are, are busy. I'm not saying that you can just be like, ha, 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 trees for days. I'm not saying that. Tables no. are very limited. <laughs> it won't always be the case. What I'm saying is it's such a swingy effect that will just make certain armies almost auto-lose. Yeah, it will be non-fun. Correct. Yeah, it, it is the it is the definition of and so here's like here's the thing that boggles my mind. So it will be these very bad play experiences. And in lieu of GW fixing this swiftly, what will happen is that events will say you cannot play forests within six inches of an objective. Sure. And when that happens, you <coughs> will not be able to put forests down on the table. <laughs> sure. Yeah, because there's just some scenarios where then you just won't be able to set up your woods. Right. Right. And yeah, so, so like you'll get a single base, like two spots in the table for woods, and that'll be it. Like that's the flip side of this. And so it frustrates me because like the secondary the the you know the the tertiary consequence is that even though it's really good, the the scene will likely clamp down on it. And the consequences, and then it's going to become not only not only not really good, it's going to become really bad for some people. Well, I mean, and and two thoughts here. One, it just it's further like kicking the shooting out of the meta, right? That's certainly true. Two, it's anti the spell casting that was you know theoretically going on here, right? Like Sylvaneth have ways to become very resilient to spells now because they can bunker small units in there and just they're immune to spells unless that wizard walks into the woods. And reduces the distance to less than an inch by, I guess, charging them and still being alive the next hero phase. Yeah. You know? Um, so, like, it, I just don't like anywhere it's going. Those woods didn't need that rule, that powerhouse of a rule. That right. kind of a line of sight blocking, bunkering thing should be the purview of the TO. As soon as I saw that, by the way, like my first thought was like, okay, well, maybe I do a Sylvaneth army this year and just do a quick, <laughs> sure. a quick paint and dry brush, you know, like for competitive stuff, because like it is, it is that powerful of a rule when something like that rolls into the meta, like it is one of those things that against some armies, it's just a guaranteed win sure, or a nearly guaranteed win, you know, against like, again, I think about like a free people's army. Yeah, but I mean, oh, sure. But it's meta warping. No, KO, KO, 
Uh, against like a ground KO, yes. Against like a standard flying KO, you got to remember most of everything's flying, which means they can mm -hmm. do normal targeting. Right. Um, and so again, against some things, it will just break. You know, like against my army that I ran uh, at Adepticon this year, it would have broken the back of that army. Yeah, I mean, you've got to ask the question, like, okay, who are, who are your spellcasters, right? Like, are your spellcasters uh, people who are mainly on foot or people who fly, right? If you've right. got an army of basically flying spellcasters, who cares? They can't hide in their trees. You'll burn them right out of those woods, right? Right. But if you've got, but there's plenty of armies who only have ground pounder casters, and suddenly those casters can't see the targets of value that you need to be putting spells on to kill. Yeah, that's no, true. Right? And, because you can't. Like you can't shoot them out, and in that dumb woods, you can't get enough melee power on them to bring them down. And the Heraldor now, um, for those requires you, you to be know, wholly within eighteen. Yeah, like the whatever terrain piece you're tooting at, you have to be wholly within eighteen inches of. Right. And so, like, if they have three bases down on a woods, uh, nope. <laughs> Admittedly, it will be the rarer, the rare or sure. rare-ish table you can actually get all three bases down, right. because that's no, quite a I lot agree. of space. It is. It is. So, whew. I'm not a fan of this change. Bottom Why line. Why do you think they made it? Do you think they, they, so they need Sylvaneth needed this? No, or, I or think they, they looked at it and said scissors. it contains the Citadel Woods. The Citadel Woods have this rule, hence this thing does too. And that was the end of the thought. I can see the logic. Yeah. And by the way, the answer is the Citadel Woods shouldn't have that rule. <laughs> I don't care about the Sylvaneth Wildwoods. Like, it's that Citadel Woods shouldn't be acting like that. The, the problem is that the, the, the issue here is not the Sylvaneth Wildwood interpretation. It's at the, the, the root of this is rotten. Okay. Because somebody mentioned earlier, like in the comments, that there's a verisimilitude to this. You can't see the tree people in the trees. Cool story. That's not what this rule shows. That's not what this rule represents. Because if I walk my five sequiturs in there to a right. Citadel Wood, what happens? They become invisible. They become invisible. Dudes in bright gold gleaming armor bringing the lightning and fury of Sigmar. What happened? What happened? <laughs> what what happened? <laughs> what happened to True Line of Sight, though? Weren't we working on True Line of Sight? We have a game where we use True Line of Sight, except this right. one. Yeah, I was really it, shocked. It should have just that. been yeah. cover. That's all it needed to be. It was the simplest thing to redesign in the universe. If you can draw that line. The enemy has cover. Okay. Cool. That, yeah. Yep. We already have this rule. It's called an obstacle. <laughs> right. <laughs> which seems like what trees, that's just how I would define a tree. If I was going to run forward, I would say, well, I can't run forward anymore. That tree is an obstacle to me running forward. <laughs> um. Uh, yeah. So whatever. Like the, the problem is not in the Sylvaneth Wildwood. It's, it's, it's the problem is in the root. Ironically, yeah. puns. Uh, uh, it's yeah, it's down there in the Citadel Wood. I want to see this rule changed. Bottom line, I don't like it. I don't think it leads to fun. I think it'll be. I think good players will play around it without an issue. Let me just say yeah. that. Okay. Yeah, well, I mean, w w like I would build lists that'll just take this into account. Like, make sure my, my you know my spell casters are flyers or other things similar. That's it. But I don't like rules that give new players easily are going to give new players a bad time are meta warping in their, in their silly, ex, you know, the extent of their impact, which I think this is, right. yep. um, which leads me right to my point. The second of things that screw new players over. Let's talk about the double lock. Right. Okay. Um, all right. The double lock. So the, they clarified I don't have multiple bases around. I don't think. Nope. Or I'd show it. Okay. So you got a. You, you got draw a piece of paper. No, it's fine. You got. You got a model. Here's your model. You got a model. This model is touching two other bases. Okay. This is well prepared. Thank you. Shut your face. <laughs> I don't see you with a visual representation. I've got one base here. What do you want me to do? Sure. Here you go. Here's my one base. Yeah. What tough that. Sure. that Turns me, it's it's upside down. It's upside down. It's it's Mickey. Is that it? no? It's Kirby. No, I can't do no, that. I don't want to get. Uh, yeah, we don't want to get flagged, dude. Nah. <laughs> okay. Anyway, happy fun ball there. Okay. The point is, is that um. Okay, so 
the question has been asked why I hate this rule so much. And I oh, just hate wait, this rule just with wait the for it. Fire of a thousand suns, by the way. This is truly my least favorite change. Okay. Okay. So we get the vision. Let's cover the, ba the base rule because I want to demonstrate with this how this goes off the rails. Sure. So you've got two models locked. Once yeah. they're once, so that the big circle, let's call him a 50 mil circle, and he's locked by 225s, right? Yes. That 50 mil guy can now no longer pile in anywhere because he's yeah. touching both bases. He's right. equidistant. And it takes two locked. models to lock a, a model instead of one model, which is what it was back in AOS one. Sure. Okay. Yep. And and by the way, I didn't like the AOS one rule either, just to, to really clarify for people. I hated old model locking because it was a nuanced, weird thing that like you could use to trick newer players. Like it was just a barrier of entry of rules nuance that players had found it very hard to get around. And even if you learned it, it was just a time consuming sinkhole of suck. Yep. Okay. Okay, um, we're ready for this. Okay. Yes, so this go. is this is where this gets into a problem. Okay. So let's say that you have this unit come in and set up a, a crescent moon around with two models that come in. You have coherency here within one inch. These two have him locked. As soon as he does two damage, these two models die. He can no longer ever pile in or attack. Right. Because he can't actually go to any towards any one model without getting farther away from an equidistant model. And so he is stuck in limbo until he retreats out of combat. So my 80, point unit of 10, or yeah, whatever. my 80 point unit of 10 models just negated uh, uh, Scarbrand. Sure. <laughs> or, what, or whatever. Yep. Um, yeah. Now, I mean, certainly what Tom and, is... You know, uh, certainly what Tom is describing is is a difficult situation. Right, like you yeah. got to really work to set that kind of nonsense up. Well, no, well, you, you just have to precise. charge with a unit. You, you just have to charge with a unit, well, and, and then have them that. not hit back hard enough to kill to blow away enough of all your guys or well, whatever, only, whatever. Yeah, like, yes. Now, what I would say is that uh, it's not like it's not intended. Like the yeah, like this is not this is not how it should be. No one should ever do this in an event. It's a great way to get a sportsman of a sportsmanship vote of one. Uh huh. Okay, like, so I'm not endorsing this in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, and hold on, I want to say something yes. real quick here, because, like, Dan just said, for me, was Shorts just said, good luck taking five, or he said, you know, enjoy your five minutes at a tournament, measuring all that out to make him equidistant. Tom right. will. Dan, this is how Tom plays, buddy. I can see Tom we with We were it. playing a <laughs> fun game. Hold Wait, on. We, we were playing a fun game on Thursday, a three-way multiplayer fun game of one players that he brought in their first new game. He spent no, 25, no, he's five. You shut your face. He spent 25 <laughs> minutes measuring out every hero's exact equidistance from each other. It wasn't then, 25 yes, you did. minutes. Shut up, you did. I measured. I was counting. And then you set up the nine inch to know exactly where, because like one of the new players playing Night Haunt, and so it could pop up. And then he, he had his little chain all over the board measuring. So every hero was exactly within the range of the other hero and unit they needed to be. And also he was blocking off the nine inches for every drop. So he couldn't get ambushed in anywhere except the very outer edges in a fun three-way multiplayer instructional game. I was playing Stormcast. Once they were on the table, they were there. It seems okay. right. To, it seems right to me. My point is, is that people like Tom exist in the world. Say, for example, Tom. Just if I had to pick one. <laughs> okay. Now, look, I, I don't care about any of that. Like, I, I don't want it. The reason, Tom, I didn't want to jump down your rabbit hole real quick is sure. because I don't want people to see that example you give of that, like, really hinky gamey thing. Right. Okay. Right. And go, oh, well, who cares? That's such a corner case. People aren't going to spend the time to do that equidistant thing. People aren't going to, like, that situation sure. is so corner case. You know what? I'll yeah. grant you all that. I don't yeah. even care. Yep. Yeah. All that stuff that Tom is proposing is stupid and dumb and no one will ever do it. It'll get you a one sports vote. It's bad player. It's bad play. Cool. 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 I am. I am on board for all of that. Okay. Like, so we're going to take all that out of the picture. I still completely hate this rule because all this does is slow down combat because what, what happened when we got this new pile in rule, and we all treated it as like, I can like, if I'm again, like, and I can just kind of keep piling in is that combat stays kind of fast and efficient. 
Like I can keep piling in guys that I've got in the back and kind of move in and start fighting. It's three inches. I can't just go like all 40 dudes. Ha -ha, they all fight. Like that's not what happened, but I got to keep moving people and feeling like I was filtering into combat. Right? Nope. Now we're right back to where we were. I'm going to well, like go forward. Somebody's going to come up and either touch two of my models, or I'm going to be forced to touch them. And suddenly we're locked back in the same position. It's a bad experience for new players. It's a weird nuance they won't get, and I don't like it. There you go. These are the two, by the way, I know I'm really harping on these because it's easy to talk about negative things. I don't want like, people to flip it out. I love everything in this FAQ. It was amazing. I love everything in AOS too. We are talking about a forest for the trees situation here. We are, we are at 99.9% like wonderful edition and i will have fun playing every game i don't really care about these two things unless he plays me but yeah sure but these two things were the wrong calls that's all i'm putting a point on them for <laughs> and if i say that i've got to back it up right <laughs> sure so that's all i just i don't want anybody to think i'm negative about like the whole edition or the rules of the faq or anything no love the you're FAQ. such a negative be beautiful you're just so negative vince i know you're just so I negative i love i love almost all the changes it's great I just said I love 99.9%. Nine, nine. I need more nines. Yeah, but how much time did you really devote to this, Vince? I'm just, I'm disappointed in you. Sure. No, that's fair. I did. I, I Look, I'm going to boost the signal on this because I want to see it changed. I right. want to see these two things changed. I, I think they both lead to bad play experiences. Can good players play around them? Yes, of course. Get good is not a good answer. Okay? Like... Bottom line. Yeah, I'm smart enough to figure out how to not have this happen in most cases. Who gives a crap? I'm not worried about me. I'm worried about, like, our friend, you know, John, who was down, who's playing his first game, and ran afoul of Tom's pile-in shenanigans and got himself I, trapped. Because Tom also pile-in shenanigans him. I, no, I just read, like, Griff Hounds can attack and retreat, and so he attacked and retreated to the other side outside of combat. Mm -hmm. And when J John had his unit set up so that when he tried to pile in, I was outside of range, and he couldn't he couldn't pile in both directions without without breaking coherency, and so it's kept, like, two-thirds of his unit out of combat. So how long do you think before he'll play you again? <laughs> oh, uh, he's already like, he was like, yeah, let's roll some dice. So, you know, <laughs> sure, he's a good dude. And, and, but anyways, I don't want people to have bad experiences when they're new. And, 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 and he, he also like, plays magic competitively. So he's yeah. like, okay, that's legit. <laughs> <laughs> he's yeah, like, oh, fair, fair play. Yeah. You know, and, so anyway, and, he won't, and it won't happen next time. That's my, that's my opinion on the double lock and the Sylvaneth Wild one. Why I think they're both bad decisions. They feel like decisions sure. made without much. They feel like decisions made without much thought. I don't want to say like I don't know that that's the case, but that's what they have the feeling of. Well, it's the secondary and tertiary consequences that are the problem. Correct. Yeah. So, you know, like I was happy to see. You know, somebody mentioned like I think yeah, Valatron just mentioned like the the command ability thing stacking. I feel like they've got most of those locked down. Like most of the really offensive ones have been locked to no more than one. Like all the White King stuff and the Vampire yep. Lord stuff and the Guo and all of those got the and the the Skaven Warlord and all the anvils and vindicators and all that crap got kneecapped, so you can't stack it anymore. And I actually like that they're sort of point fixing it like that. I know everybody says, why don't they just make a rule that you can't do one? Right? That you can't do like one. Like why why make why not just have a blanket rule of one for this? Because I think it's fun that sometimes it does make sense to let a command ability stack. Like it's it's I I it's good to have that design space open and just remove it where you need to is my ultimate belief. Now maybe I'll prove wrong in time, but there you go. Yeah. Um how would I change the pile in rule? Easy. If you're locked with two people, you pick one of them. That is your now the model you are counted as being the closest to. Just keep going. It's it's the simplest thing. Like the it in fact it speaks to the way the rules are written right now. Like the core rules state it in in the singular, meaning that in the case I was equidistant, I would say I would basically make a choice and say the second model that has me locked is actually the one I'm going to choose. This is the one that I must remain, you know, move no farther away from, and swing around it. Yep. And then we can yep. just jump in the line, do 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 do, do just right on down, and we can keep having our fun combat. And we don't have to suddenly hit the target. It's interactive and people can move and they're not stuck. And yeah. Yeah. 
you know, in that weird crescent example, you just choose a model to go into, which is what the monster would do anyways, rather than lack like rather than stuck in an anti gravity field. Sure. Yeah. Um, by the way, as far as I know, they are pushing all of those those limited stacking things out to the War Scrolls themselves. So you don't have to reference the FAQ for that stuff. I don't know if they're all updated yet, but they were all, but they did confirm yeah, that they're like, pushing them. Updated except on for, the app. Is what yeah, on the app, yeah. Except for the War Scroll packs that you bought. Well, yes. hey, sorry about well, your luck there, buddy. You're the one that. who decided to buy analog media in a digital age, okay? Look, what is this, the Library of Alexandria? Get rid of the Dead Sea Scrolls, homie, Okay. I'm just saying we are living in a digital world and I am a digital girl. So, uh, there's a lot of FA, like that's, I think everything on the FAQ now that we've gone for like an yep. hour on this. Yo, you should change the title of the show. <laughs> I, I didn't want to, but you pushed it. So we you, did, you it. did You did have like a 15 to 20 minute rant there. I, and, look. uh, in addition, I'm transitioning the next issue on the news <laughs> um, is uh, we know that the release is coming, the Black Coach is coming, Magister of Hammerhall, Sequiturs are going to be 10 for 50, and Chain Rafts 10 for 40. Yeah, good stuff. That's fine. All seems fine. That Magister of Hammerhall being 115 or whatever was higher than I expected. That mm -hmm. dude's expensive. He's huge. Just a little bit. Like He is bigger than yeah. you think, is what I'll say. It's but a gorgeous also... sculpt, too. It's a really good-looking sculpt. Yeah, but I don't know if he's like 115. 115, right? Yeah, that's. I, I don't like. I don't like the weird donkey animals. Oh man, I think he's beautiful. I like seeing him in person there at like Warhammer World or whatever. He was gorgeous, just gorgeous. I loved him. Okay. So, but that, but that coach, but that coach, yo, how about it? Indeed. Uh yes. So. Yes, yeah. the rafts, by the way, are pushed to fit, and they're ten for forty. So what that tells me is you need to just buy multiple Another, starter, getting starter yes. boxes and then just like, you know, you know, eBay off everything. Already on it. <laughs> it's just so they're so expensive. Like you're getting the identical kit. Yeah, it's expensive. It's a thing. Sequiturs being 10 for 50, though, you know, that's get it. Get in on them while they're good. Look, enjoy this potential year you've got of them being ridiculously undercosted. I don't know okay. what you're talking about, Vince. That's Just the news. Do you want to move on to anything else? Players, because I plan to drink your tears in <laughs> GHB 2019 when they're like 160 or 180. I can't wait. Vince, I thought you said the sequiturs were okay. I Well, then I played against him in my heart. My heart. I, I think the example I gave you during the game was like, you know how people tell you the desert's hot, right? And you're like, yeah, the desert's hot. Of course it's hot. It's a desert. That's why they called it that, because it's hot. And then you like walk for three hours in the desert with very little water, and you're like, whoa, no, the desert's hot. <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's the difference. So, anywho, there you go. I don't know what you're talking about. That's weird. <laughs> Shout out to Relian, who said he's trying to finish his Grand Slam this year. Uh, I assume he means he's going for the, like, the sort of the best overall at well, you, know, you want to do a pro, I'm guessing a grand alliance of mm -hmm. he wants to get uh best overall of all four grand alliances, yeah. Which is hey, I want to see the grand grand slam. Uh, yeah. if anyone can do it, Relian, it's you, sir. I believe in you. Uh, shout out to Relian who took uh best overall at Midwest Meltdown this last weekend. So, who did a who who uh showed the power of hand of dust mightily, I should say. <laughs> He, Proving he that touched, his Nagash was the real Nagash in games four and five, I might add. He, he touched a lot of people. <laughs> All right. So, um, okay. Uh, is that everything news-wise? Are we good with the news? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, an hour into it, let's talk about our pick of the week. Look, the FAQ was news. It was big news. It was going to be something we talked about a lot. Get into it. Long yeah, I mean, show. It's the type of thing we would do a show for. So. Right. More value for your zero dollars today. All right. So uh, let's talk about our pick of the week. So, Mitch, what would you like to share with the audience, buddy? Well, <clears throat> unusually, I'll probably I'll pick something that's not uh, Warhammer. Um, my pick of the week is uh, something that I know that you despise. And that is... Uh, You're going to recommend that new Titans trailer? No. Oh, okay. 
Are you talking about the Titans Go? No. 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 I know exactly no. what you're talking about. I know. Yeah, yeah. Fuck Batman. Um, <laughs> Uh, no, I'm, I'm gonna. I, I know how much you love uh, role playing games, uh, terrain, and miniatures. Uh, I'm gonna tout the uh, Dwarven Forge Kickstarter for Caverns Deep. Uh, I, my buddy is uh, the senior director there, and the stuff looks amazing. It's you'll have to sell a kidney, maybe even a lung, uh, but it's really amazing stuff. And I, uh, I think that uh, I think a gift certificate might be a, a really nice present for uh, for uh, Vince this year, Tom. Uh, no, no, I know better. He, he would literally tear it up. I still have that picture of that, of him when you guys were playing. And I think we're going to need that Kolchak, uh, uh, sound with a zoom in or maybe, uh, some, you know, hell of darkness, my old friend. <laughs> you know how much he, he, he just looks like such a sad soul in that picture. Yes, like yes, Vince Vince had lost his soul because we were playing with terrain in a RPG, and he just it it was killing him a little bit inside. Do we, do we actually lose Vince? No, I'm still here. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I'm still here. I just I froze. now that I've learned your friend is somebody involved in the creation of this product, I'm not going to sit here and bag on it. I'm going to follow <laughs> what my mom told me, which is if you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. Oh, well, that's very nice of you. But then you might, you might not talk very much. That's no, all right. That's all right. I'll, I'll do you solid in my pick of the week. All right. So check this. Yes, everybody, if you're if you're into that sort of thing, there you go. I will say it is very high quality stuff. That I will certainly that not is. disagree with. That is. Uh, yes. That is that is just prima facie obvious. So there you go. Okay. Tommy, what are you sharing with everybody? Uh, Dan from AS AOS Shorts, who's watching the show right now, um, he did a show on the FAQ and stuff like that, and I just want to promote it. So um, I would encourage you guys to check it out if you want a nice, like, direct dose of some of that stuff. And they announced a... Uh, a uh, he announced a partnership as well where they'll have discounts with Garissimo. Um, so yeah, check it out. Nice, nice. Uh, my pick of the week. I'm going to shout it over to our guest, to to Mitch, who was nice enough to pimp the Kickstarter, but didn't even bother to pimp his own video on it. <laughs> uh, so I will do it for you if you want to see Mitch talk about the Kickstarter and go through everything for the for the Dwarven Forge Caverns Deep. Um, Check it out. I'll link his video down below. We're, we're always happy to see Mitch making more content. We want more. All right. We're, we're hungry baby birds, Mitch. There's some really good content uh, creators out there now that are doing great stuff. Uh, it, and I think the production quality has risen to a point where I don't think I can keep up. Uh, I, can, I can gab on the uh, uh, in front of a camera um, and build lists with Tom, but there's some really good people out there building stuff, and uh, I'm just looking to make room for them. Look, some of the most popular movie review channels that have like hundreds of thousands of subs and get like millions of views are just people who literally sit in a room and talk at a camera. So, you know, it's fine. Like, I, I got nothing against production quality, but you're not getting it at this channel. So, you know, you knew what you came for. Are we going, we going for solid C? Solid C forever. I love, I love that. That's like your motto. You got to make yep. a shirt. Warhammer Weekly. Aiming solid for C. Solid C. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, so that's my pick of the week. Uh Thanks. Let's turn to some hobby time. Mitch, what are you working on, buddy? I'm on prepped. your table, man. I'm prepped. It's actually on my table. I've got a nice L desk over here. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I've been working, I think, for about maybe about 40 years now on this uh, Bretonian Undead Army. <laughs> sure. Yeah. It's there was, the, there was the Big Bang, and then the universe cooled, and then you began converting this army. Yeah. Exactly. But uh, well, I, Your time is now, Mitch. Your time is now. My time is now, and I've been, I'm really uh, kicking it in gear. I have a unit that, um, that has been sitting on the table for about a year now, and I just decided I had to get to it, and it was, uh, it was bugging me. I wasn't playing it because it wasn't even fully built, um, but it's heavily converted, and um, uh, so I wanted to – I'll show it. I, I put a video on that, on that as well, so uh, it, it just to give an idea when I built all the um, – uh, I built all the endless spells – and then I decided, you know what? How can I build all this new stuff? But I'm still sitting there with this tray filled with all my Black Knights, which is like a three-part kit. And I, again, all the I, arms are skeletal arms of the Bretonian-based stuff. Um, I dremeled out a lot of the interior stuff. I'll be real quick and show just a, an example of it. Let's see if we can get a little, um, little close-up. 
Uh, but it's a three-part kit. I got uh, you can see the skeletal arms even even uh -huh. in the uh, with the lance. Um, I've got some that uh, you know have a you know I took uh, like a little visor up and you can see the skeletal faces. Um, but you know again when I say three-part I mean that <laughs> I yep. dremeled all yep. that crap sure. out. You know I've got I got a couple of them that are uh, let's see this one here probably could see the face of the skeleton a little better there. Um, but yeah, I've got a unit of ten of these guys, and um, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish them uh, and, nice. uh, and put them on the table finally after all this time. Awesome, I dig it, man. It was like you had a good looking, already pretty big chunk of the force done. So I'll look forward to seeing the rest of it finish. Yeah, I'm really happy that uh, when I, that my last Adepticon I brought I finished up the Questing Knight Hex Wraiths and the Men at Arms uh, Spirit Host because they are gonna be the cornerstone of my Night Hound army. There you go. That's I'm right. Happy about that. Tom, what about you, buddy? What are you hobbying on this week? Um, I'm plugging away at daughters. Um, they uh, they need to be done. I am I am impressed um, by your endurance. I can't believe you're not just painting Stormcast happily and loving it. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I I loved spanking you guys with Stormcast this last weekend. Um, yeah, uh, whoa, you won in the last turn on a objective roll. Let's not let's not oversell this. You won by details. one point. Okay. Details. Um, no, uh, I, I well, I mean, I've committed to doing daughters with you <laughs> uh -huh. for Holy Havoc, so they need to get done. Um, and realistically, like once I get this unit done, half of my entire everything for the event is done. <laughs> Because I'm doing, you know, a bunch of uh, witches. And so, yep. Yep. Like, I just have a couple heroes and, you know, a cauldron to paint. Sure. But, sure. Yeah. So, I'm uh, plugging away at Daughters. They're fun. Uh, I enjoy them. Like, and I love my scheme. And I love my, like, I have always wanted to do, like, a heavy purple army. And I'm mm -hmm. getting to do that now. And so, um, it's been a fun kind of, like, project. Sure. Uh I have a bunch of terrain that I've been working on and I'm still kind of working on that. Um, yeah. Right on. Uh, I finished up my warp gnaw vermin Lord, which I was very happy about. He's over it was there. Now in the case. Very well. Uh, yeah, I was very happy. Thank you to everybody who, you know, threw a like over there or whatever. Um, I was, it, it came out, it, you know, pretty darn close to what was in my head and the illusion of the rats climbing out of the hole in the base. I thought worked well as a little scenic, sort of base that that's that's the level of basing that should be on like all of my miniatures right there so i got him way up and off and got a nice fun scene going on and he'll go to competition here next weekend uh speaking of next weekend uh i'm prepping up everything for uh for gen con uh so i've got to get all my like minis ready for paint classes and stuff like that so that's what i'm doing my airbrush booth is just full of a bunch of um like Xenithold minis that I'll use to teach classes. I have to make one more like scenic diorama base thing for uh, a unit. So that's what that is in progress. That's all drying. It's still, it's getting there. It's getting there. It's gooey. There's some gooeyness there. Um, and then once that's done, I will be able to return to actual projects. I'm hoping to have all this stuff packed up and ready to go by in the next day. Um, then I can go back to fun projects I actually you know working on my own stuff um so that's what but that's what's been taking up the majority of my hobby time uh related topic to that people who are watching this if you are going to be at gen con and want to take a class with me uh there was a class i just learned this today uh the class on uh making true metallic metals pop which i think was the uh, i need to find the time here hold on let me i'll bring up the exact class and time one moment i apologize everyone uh way to not be ready vince well i thought i had this open but i remembered i had to restart my computer okay so uh making true metallic metals pop with non-metallic metal style uh which is on 8 3 so that's friday at 3 p.m it was improperly listed in the guide and the event guide as having a maximum people allowed of two <laughs> <laughs> instead of 12, uh, because somehow the one got left off when they loaded it and I didn't catch it earlier. 
So if you're going to be at Gen Con and want to take that class Friday, 3 p.m., um, just come to the class. You can bring like generics and that's fine. I'll have 10 seats theoretically open for this. So you're more than welcome. All right. There you go. That's it's and too like late for them to fix it. So 42 great. people are going to show up for that. I mean, look, I'll fit everybody in that I can, is what I'll say. Okay. So if I can if I can beg, borrow, and steal chairs, I'll get everybody around that table. I can. Um, all right. So there's the news on that one. Uh I unfortunately as I was prepping everything, I had to download my my teaching guide and I saw that the maximum people was two. I was like, oh. That's probably bad. Uh, would have been a really intimate class, but there you go. Um, Where'd everybody go? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So, guys, let's talk about some ghosts, right? Let's talk about ghosts. Oh, so, I thought you were going to talk about your sequiturs. No. Like, oh. from your experience this week. Sure. All right. As part of this, it, Tom was down for a, for a marathon game. We played this last week. And so we did a little three player game and I ran a, uh, I ran a, a fun list. I'd wanted to play for a little while, which was a Skaven list led by Archaon. Okay. So you use like Archaon and all the cheap Skaven heroes. Cause they all have command abilities to you. You, cause his, his ability just lets chaos heroes trigger off their abilities. So like the screaming bell and the gray seer and warlords, you just like fire them all off. And then the rest of my army was just massive units of clan rats. Okay. Who were then benefiting from these like overlapping command abilities. Um, and Archaon did the Lord, the, 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 <laughs> the Lord of chaos, the Lord of chaos, undivided, the grand marshal of the apocalypse, the ever chosen himself. Okay. <laughs> Uh, charged a unit of sequiturs. 10. 10 sequiturs. Yeah. 240 points. 240 points. And fought them for three rounds. Three battle, you know, like combat rounds or whatever. Because of the way the turns happened. It's a three-player game. And did a grand total of zero wounds. <laughs> and took five wounds or something in return and was like, you know what? I'm out of here. Forget this. I just like retreated him. I was like, I'm done. This is if the grand marshal apocalypse can't even get a wound through now, famously our has terrible rend. Okay. Like, so I accept that. But did you flub? Uh, no, I no. Was, it was pretty standard rolling. It's just, I mean, they, they were backed up. I mean, they were on like, they had were backed up by a Celestin. And so they, they were on three up rerollable. You mean a Castellan or a Castellan? Yeah. Yeah. They're, they had her back to buy Castle and they had three up re rollable. Yeah. They were just, they yeah. were on three up re rollable saves and it just wasn't like, like completely re rolling anything. And Tom, oh, by the way, they had the hot hand. They also decimated like an entire unit of clan rats that came in with Archeon, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Well, I mean, that's, that was just, you know, whatever. Yeah. That was in, incidentally, they also deleted a unit while they were fighting him. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, uh, I mean, they didn't kill the whole unit, but they, 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 the clan rats bounced at the same time Archaon did. They were all like, nope, big bucket of nope. Uh, just leaving that behind. Yeah. So, uh, so that was a demoralizing event, as that was the only thing that Archaon did the whole game. Like he charged that one unit and then did nothing for three battle rounds or three combat rounds and then left. Yeah. And with his, with his tail, double tails tucked between his legs. You got it. Boy, oh boy, did he. Um, <laughs> So that's a that, that's a that demeaning thing. I'm I'm waiting for that story in a novel where Archaon, the Lord of the Apocalypse, charges into like a unit of ten randos, ten battle line randos, and is and like, just, like, "We got this!" And they just hold him <laughs> off for days. They're like, "What?" Yeah, <laughs> just like, and, and I just he just leaves because he's tired of this crap. That's an epic story for those for that that unit. Yeah. And then Archaon, Grand Marshal of the Apocalypse, was like, forget this, I'm out of here. And did fly away. Using the only advantage he had, the fact that he can fly a retreat from combat. All right, anyway. Oh, it was I amazing. It. So, yeah, and yeah. they, of course, like, dropped, uh, like, the great weapons got on him and dropped 
like a bunch of sixes in the hit, which exploded to D3 hit. So they got like nine great weapon attacks coming in. And he saved on a couple of them and still took like a bunch of yeah, it was it was silly. I concur with that appraisal. Uh all right. They're too good. Okay. So um <laughs> as I said, enjoy your year. Um and then and then prepare to be like I I I I get ready to drink your salty tears in 2019. So um let's talk about ghosts, guys. As, as I said before. We, so we also had those on the table this weekend. We did have ghosts on the table. I thought they played really fun. Uh, I thought it seemed like a really fun army. Like I enjoyed playing against them and I enjoyed watching them work. I thought it was cool. Obviously we didn't have the whole range of the ghost force because, you know, not everything is available yet. Um, I, E there was no black coach because he doesn't have his new black coach model yet. Uh, that comes out here next weekend or whatever. Not this coming. Uh, but I wanted to start and kind of talk about overall impressions. Uh, what does everybody think? What's their, your overall impressions of of night haunt right now mitch you want to kick us off sure um uh i love them uh, i think they're i think they're they have some very interesting uh deployment options um i think they're really resilient in close combat uh they can do work even their their basic battle line units um I, their ability to return models based on you know the heroes uh you know the proximity to heroes and the various different abilities even some of their artifacts that can enhance that it's a huge benefit. Um, you know, really they, they, uh, they, I think well, the thing I also like is that aside from the coach, which is not a leader, I was actually uh, glad that they didn't make that a leader. They just made it a pure behemoth. Right. All of their characters can benefit from Lookout Sir. And I think that's phenomenal. It gives them, they're, they're resilient already, but they're not like these 12 or 16 wound behemoths or, or you know, you know, monstrous creatures. They are. They stand fairly similar, just a little bit bigger than the rank and file um, uh, troops. A little fiddly, a little spindly, a little weak at the uh, you know the single points that they sometimes have. But uh, seven wounds, not a, not a behemoth. They can get a lookout, sir, with the static unmodifiable saves. That's pretty good. I mean, I I, I like the idea that they can that they they're not easy to remove, and there's a, so so many ways to heal back wounds. There's so many, uh, so uh, many. Uh, uh, options. Uh, you, I think that the the army can you can play it elite, but I think it really there's a, some great lists with for to, to take advantage of that horde mentality uh, because it's really hard to get these these units removed from the table. You really got to focus, you know, either sniping down the characters uh, or you know and whatnot. But I also love them. I, I think the thing I love the most is just so many different ways of moving around the board, showing up on the board, repositioning like the, uh, was it the Dread Hollow? What are they called again? Mm -hmm. the, um, Dreadbane Hollow. Those guys, 100 points for those guys, and the ability to uh, to reposition uh, you know, to the other side of the table with a proximity uh, a limitation, or being able to draw other units right near your general. I mean, these are, these are great ways to reposition and completely uh, fake out your opponent. I, I love the way it plays. Yeah, I mean... I, they seem like they, one of the, one of the sort of comparisons I made when uh, we were at the table was it felt a lot like playing against or playing uh, demons back in either an old edition of, you know, Warhammer Fantasy or, or in 40k now where you've got like this sort of stock invulnerable save, which usually, which doesn't get any better or any worse. You're always just like, yeah, yeah, Rend, I don't care. Five ups. Let's go. You know, just bucket, bucket of five ups. And uh, I like that. I, I love that it's a really interesting uh, counter in the meta as you have mm -hmm. sort of one army showing up. Ren gone wild. Yeah, the, well, <laughs> you have one army showing up that really you want Ren to peel, right? Like, you've got to have Ren to peel, like, those, you know, some of those new Stormcast off the table or some of any classic, you know, original flavor Stormcast as well. And there are other armies that can still get themselves quite, quite ridiculous on their saves. And at the same time, so if you invest heavily into Rend, because Rend generally <laughs> has a cost associated to it, right? Um, then you suddenly you run up against Night Haunt, and you're like, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> yep. Well, this all does nothing. This is just all nothing. All of this is nothing. And so I think they're in a really interesting balance in the meta. Like, I, I dig that a lot. Um, overall, I agree. I like looking through this. There were a lot of, I think, fun different builds. I think they have a great 
core sort of like solid base troop, right? Mm -hmm. um, in the chain rasps, uh, which I think is always important in an army, both that like the sort of core thing be visually aesthetically interesting and also be sort of useful on the table, <laughs> right? I, yeah. I think it's bad. You don't want like the main thing that you would expect to see on the table to be bad, right? I, I think that's generally a bad experience. Um, but that's not the case here. So, you know, overall, I really like the different ways the army can play. I think it's actually surprisingly uh, versatile. Um, yeah. And, and again, like their battle line, if choices aren't terrible either, right? Like they've obviously got your chain rasps as your main stuff, but you know, your grim gas, your hex wraiths and your uh, spirit hosts all go battle line. If so, okay, cool. Good, good list. I love that list. Yeah, I agree. Um, so like overall, I, I, I think this is, I'm, I'm really impressed by this force in that it felt like it has a lot of cool things going on, a lot of little interesting synergies, but none of it feels, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I hate to use the term like overpowered or OP or something. Right. Cause that that's just such yeah. a silly statement, but it all felt right. I, I don't know. That's a weird way to express it, but like they, everything about Nothing the army the top or dominating. Yeah. Nobody's going to be using the word broken. Solid. <laughs> yeah, like it all felt like it was solid. And when it started to really synergize, man, it could do some really impressive stuff. And yet, you know, so like, okay, break up the synergies, you know, like it was really cool how it all kind of functioned together. I love, so. I lo I love that everything is on an unmodified six can do a mortal wound. Every unit can do, Not can provide everything. Well, m most, you're right. Okay. Most, most units have most that. Most of the new stuff don't have that. Hmm. There's okay. a let's right. just say it this way. Right. There's You're a fair right. amount of mortal wounded wounded right. in the army. How about that? <laughs> yeah, the older stuff, yeah. There's, and the, there are certainly sources of mortal wounds. There's no question about that. There's um, a lot of ways to get mortal wounds from, from yeah. spells, from shooting, from yeah. uh, bravery yeah. attacks. Uh, so there's there, I, that's where I that's where I, I think I, I was headed. But the idea that they have a lot of methods that they can contribute. Mm -hmm. Even when you're talking about really good armor saves like the Stormcast, where they could do three up rerollable ones, stuff like that, um, they can. They can. There, there's. I, I don't. I really don't see a lot of weak links. There are weak links. I'm not going to talk about it with winners and losers. Mm -hmm. um, there are certainly winners and losers. But I really like that 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 the the army over the all the uh, top to bottom. It may not be one unit that's just going to blow your mind, but there's some well, really good stuff in there. Oh, well, we'll talk. I know. I know. Yeah. <laughs> You're saying there are some that blow your skirt up. Tom. There's That's a couple. There's yes. a couple that I really like. Yes. There's a couple that went, hmm, injured niggers 2.0. Uh, sure. <laughs> I, I think you're overvaluing them, but we'll have that discussion. Um, yeah. the, uh, the other thing that's really interesting about this army that I think we, we haven't super mentioned, but is definitely not to be missed when we're talking about overall impressions, this is a highly mobile army. That's right? an understatement. Yeah. Like you have a ton of six and eight and 12 inch move and your entire army flies like everything. And like at everything. the drop of a command point, you can rip any unit back to your general. Yep. So yep. like if he like off table deploys, you know, and comes from the reserve pops in and he's like, you know, YOLO. And then suddenly like he pops up a 40 ra chain rasp core behind him. Like, you know, just redeploy that from across the table. Like, yeah, that's pretty good. And, yep. and if, you, if you think about the, the rules now with scoring objectives, where you don't and, and you don't have to necessarily leave a unit to bunker that objective until somebody comes along and takes it from the other side of the table, um, you could, you know, you could pop around pretty quickly and, and recapture any any um, objectives that, that maybe have been abandoned that somebody's thinking that they can score on. There's a lot. Right. Is, yeah, the repositioning is amazing. Yeah. Um, all right. So I, I'd say overall pretty positive. Like I think this is a very solid army overall and, and, a, and a really like impressive bit of craftsmanship um, in that nothing felt crazy. It all made sense together. And I think there's a lot of good builds. I think it's got a ton of potential. Fair appraisal. Are we all on board yeah. for that? That kind of wrap up? Yeah, I think that's sure. probably a good summary. All right. So that being said, um, 
I, I what we're going to focus on here is sort of Night Haunt on their own. Obviously, we can talk about Night Haunt on their own as opposed to Night Haunt in a Legions of Nagash army, because a lot of these units can end up being in a Legions army, right? But not the ones that matter. <laughs> well, I mean, no, so there's, I, I don't know that that's true. Still, like chain rasps are legions valid. Yeah, so they are. They are. Yeah, I mean, Spirito is still, still very viable. Still very yeah. good units. Yeah. So yeah. I, what I'll say is I, I want to leave that to the side. I think there's yeah. a lot of good value sure. there, but that's for the legions of Nagash deep dive show. When we go and sure. look at that in the new meta, right? Can we still, can we still talk about, uh, uh, allies for, like yeah, non sure, of course. Night Haunt. Okay. Yeah, you're saying like allies both for the Night Haunt and them as allies to other forces. Well, I'm mean? more interested in their allies. Yeah. Like well, we're definitely gonna talk about their allies. Yes. Yeah. Is there okay. someone that likes to moonlight with the uh the Night Haunt in <laughs> in probably every one of my lists that I put together that I would run competitively? <laughs> moonlight. Uh see, because it's ghosts and it's dark. Okay. You know, I like that. <laughs> it's, it's great. Uh, it's great. All right. So, uh, let's, let's get into it. Let's get into it and talk about, we're not going to go war scroll blow by blow. Okay. Sure. What yeah. instead we're going to do is obviously our old, our old favorites show back up. Right. So whatever, whatever with those, i.e. your car and rates, uh, your, it, it, your hex rates, all these kinds of things. It's your worth, hosts. it's worth noting, by the way, let me put a, p a pin on this. That all the prior war scrolls that were like on a, on hit rolls of six do a mortal wound, all of those became unmodified hit rolls of six. They do a mortal wound. But that, that's a positive, though. You know, you, I think that you're, you're, Maybe. is that where you're going? Well, you, you're not going to get the debuffs that are going to remove your capability for your spiritos to dish out uh, mortal wounds. They still have that chance to dish out mortal yeah. wounds. You're not going to take that away. I think that's that that is the better. That, that's a trade off. For the idea of being able to do it, maybe potentially on a five or a yeah, four. Especially yeah, especially the only I mean, way to really five it was the the night of shrouds. The night of shrouds, the, you know, the, the gift, the the bow wrapped gift that GW just gave us with Malheim Portents, which was the plus one to hit, and everybody's like, "Ooh, yeah!" And then suddenly, like, they're like, "Oh." I mean, yep. here's what I'll say: plus one to hit in this army <laughs> is actually pretty important. Um, because this is an army that loves the number four and sitting under that to hit column. Sure. Okay. Sure, sure, sure. And yeah, like, I don't, I don't disagree with that. So yeah. it's not like having a plus one to hit is a bad thing in this army. That's, that's what I'll sure. say. But there's a lot of methods to get plus one now in, in, in pure night. Haunt. So, uh, or reroll ones or whatever. There's a lot of reroll. Yeah. 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 Or plus one to wound. Yeah. Okay. So, and, and and that's an important thing to understand. Like one of the interesting elements of a lot of these scrolls, when you look through like the non sort of, I don't know, elite characters is that sure. a lot of this army hits on fours, right? Like a yeah. lot. Um, or, or, or in the case of your spirit hosts fives. Um, but you know, like four is definitely where this army drifts, you know? Uh, and, and so you have to be paying attention to things like debuffs matter when you're an army that hits mostly on fours and you run up against stuff like, you know, like Nurgle or, or I don't know, other death or whatever that passes out a lot of neg ones. It can be pretty dangerous. Like it can be pretty uh, debilitating Crippling. pretty fast. Yeah. Um, now they counter that out some by also having often a pretty high attack number. So it's not as impactful to somebody who's only making like one attack that hits on a four. Right. But nonetheless, it's still a less than pleasant experience. So to me, plus one hit's still good. All right, let's talk about some War Scroll winners and losers. Mitch, do you want to start us off? You want to pick a, both a winner and a loser. What do you like? Sure. Um, geez, uh, to pick one is really hard for the winners. There's a well, bunch we'll go of around things. a couple of times. You don't have okay. to. It doesn't have to be your only one. Um, uh, if I had to pick, all right. So I'll pick one. I mean, there's a couple that I think would probably be top, more higher up on the scale. But I think okay. that the, the one that I, I like the most is um, is the he is hex rates, in terms of how they've improved. I know that they're not a new war scroll. I know that they're not the new hotness, but I think they still are solid. Um, you know, I think that they've they got better with the revision to their war scroll. Uh, they're um, I think that uh, uh, if I remember correctly, um, 
let's see, they have uh, they they their 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 spirit walk when they go over units. Um, it's what is it a five up now? Five up, they yeah. Right, yep. that's a big deal, and the fact that they move so so fast already, um, and the ability to retreat out of you know, and, and one of the tactics I like to use is I would thrust them forward with uh, ahead of the blood knights, hit a unit, and then the blood knights, which are a little bit slower, would come up behind them. Obviously, this is not happening in a night haunt you know, army, but you could have something else you know uh, trailing them, retreat them out, maybe even forward to go after a, 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 a heroes or artillery, um, and then that the ability to go over is still an attack. And mm -hmm. then somebody else would charge in behind them and take maybe lock up that unit. And by that time, those two hit units hit. A lot of units would just be you know disappear or be very seriously wounded. I think Night Hawks got better, and I think that they they definitely deserve a mention in terms of uh, the winner category. Right on. No, I I don't disagree. I think like again, they're so blindingly fast, especially in the things they can do in this force. So mm -hmm. there you go. Uh, all right. What about a loser? Who's a loser for you? Um, you know, uh, I think I don't think that people are going to disagree with this one, uh, and it, it it hurts, but I don't think it hurts Night Hawn as much as some people are complaining about, and that's the Morn Goal. I think the Morn Goal lost because it went down a hundred point, it went down another fifty points. It used to be four hundred, then it had a, a drop to three fifty at one point, then it, now it's at three hundred. It lost uh, some of its mortal wound saving uh, capability. It lost uh, some of its resiliency. Um, it, uh, I don't think it's quite as effective, certainly, as what we, when we saw, you know, its original War Scroll. Um, but the thing that I think is really most important about why it lost is when you compare the point cost for what it does, what, it, how, what it's capable of, to the, to the Black Coach, I think the Black Coach outshines it, and it's 20 points cheaper. It's got 12 wounds. It has a crazy, and that, that's what was one of my, my winners, too, crazy amount of output, so many utility uh, capabilities. I would rather. I mean, when people have talked about what would you take a black coach or a morning goal. Uh, most of the time, I'm thinking I'll go for the black coach. Maybe even a double black coach. You know, I'll, could I do a black coach and a morning goal? Sure, but I'm really enticed by not by by saving the 20 points and getting something that I think is more useful in this army. Yep. Yeah, I, you know, this is actually something that came up. Yeah, shout out to uh, to Relian who mentioned this like uh, some couple shows ago, talking about the the this balance and i tend to agree i'm sad i finally got my morn goal and painted it up and now i just want to play the black coach instead but that's all right hey the morn goal is still there in the cabinet he's happy and you know there it is um but you know i i, I think you're dead on the the coach has healing the coach has uh, just a lot more and i don't know what the morn goal is really doing anymore at this point it's not it's not living up to what it was it's not just like an uncrackable nut anymore right it's actually it's a distraction yeah, and I mean, you know, it's fairly straightforward to bring down. Mm -hmm. Um because it's just it's not anywhere near as defensive as what it used to be. Uh I mean, I just tied the thing up with like clan rats or something last game. So, you know, there you go. Uh and got more than half his wounds off before I just retreated and was like, "All right, I'm done. We'll go 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 somewhere else now." All right, Tom. Uh what do you got, buddy? Yeah, so uh, my big win, obviously, is the one that I – my winner is the one that I alluded to. Um, I know that not everybody is, is as hot on them as I am, although I'll say for the first couple of weeks they've been sold out at most stores. Well, and that's, again, I think that's the model. I think these could almost have any rules, and they would sell because oh, they're yeah, amazing. Models. And this is the, the Mirror Morn uh, Banshees. Mm -hmm. um, How many do you have? Uh, now I only have eight. I mean, I'm not playing them. Like, I'm not planning on playing on this competitively, but uh, I only have eight models. Uh, but I mean, if I ran the, an army, I'd run two units of eight, of twelve. Like, there's just no like, yeah. Anyways, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but so for the banshees, um, they are so everybody is kind of locked in on their spell eater ability. You know, it's just such a unique, interesting ability. Um, at, even as a non-wizard, uh, they 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 get an unbind at 18 inches, not the, the full 30. Um, and they get plus one for every four models. So by default, when the unit deploys at, uh, at its uh, 80 points, you get um, plus one. If you're maxed out, you get plus three to those unbinds. Yep. So this is a four models. to... Yeah, we should, we should give the basic stats on the Banshees, right? So there are well, four... Well, I'm going to I'm gonna go to... Uh, like, I'm going to do the weapon attack here in a minute. Yeah, no, I'm just um, saying there are four yeah. to twelve unit 
eight inch yeah. move flying like everything in the army one wound right yep. and they're 80 points for four or 210 if you for the with your horde discount you, okay, you got to go to 12 right. if you if you're going to deploy eight you got to move to 12 yeah i mean you get a real yes, discount. and that's a, like 210 for 12 of these i would argue is a right. steal and and the reason why i say that is because so th when you do that they're at plus three to unbind if they do unbind um and if they unbind a spell until the enemy's next hero phase all of their attacks are at plus one to attack on their dagger. Um, if once in each of your own hero phases, if they're within six inches of an endless spell, they can attempt to dispel it. Um, they, if they succeed, um, they suffer a D three mortal wounds, which it will is. eat in your models. And you'll add plus one to the attacks uh, uh, in the units, you know, with their chill daggers. And so what's so fascinating about this is, uh, but that said, yes, they'll eat into it. But any of your like model restoring abilities can restore them after this has happened. Sure. Um, so that's not a problem. Um, but to me, what jumps out is that they are so their profile is one attack, a four plus to hit, a three plus to wound, neg two rend d three damage. So you're getting four of these attacks at four plus three plus neg two rend d three damage for eighty points, or you're getting twelve of these attacks for two ten. Sure. What size um, base are they on? Twenty fives. No, they're not on twenty fives. That's way too small. Uh, they They've got to be on thirty twos. I can grab them real quick. Yeah, I think um, they are on thirty twos. They might be on 32s. Yeah, yeah. they're on 32s. Yeah, it looks on 32s. Yeah. Okay, okay. so they're on 32s. Um, so uh, the reason why this is so significant is like you can uh, pretty easily in the army, um, depending on where you would deploy them, get uh, potentially reroll ones to hit. Um, that's not too outside that world as well as plus one to attack and plus one to wound. Um, and so if you wanted to set up an alpha strike with these guys and send them in, um, you could potentially do that. Or like you send the heroes forward and then drop these in once the heroes are in place. Um, and they, the key with this is, is like, if you begin to do the math compared to like Endrin riggers, um, like they're comparable, I would say, to a unit of like six riggers who are going to have seven attacks at threes and twos instead of fours and threes. Same profile, neg two, d3. Um, they're also going to be 12 wounds on a four up save, only these guys are immune to rent, so they'll have the better survivability than those riggers. But most importantly, they, from a force multiplier standpoint, because of unbinding, because of the fact that they can give plus one to attacks from a hero, you could easily find yourself at 24 to 36 attacks. As opposed to the riggers who, that unit, like, the big time rigger attacks were at, like, um, were at, like, uh, you'd have, like, nine models, seven would be at 15 attacks. And we're talking 24 to 36, even with worse numbers. Um, it's pretty significant. And that's for 21 or 210 points. Um, and you can restore these models where you can't do that with like Endrin Riggers, for example. And as if all this wasn't gross enough, um, if they succeed, if they roll a natural 10 on that deep strike charge, um, they double pile in. Sure. And we'll talk about that when we talk about the Allegiance abilities, right? That's not something specific yeah. to them, but yeah. No, but it's just like... It's the the reality is this: they are inherently worse than riggers at the same points. Well, there are less points; they're about thirty less, but whatever. Um, but because of the the multitude of synergies they have, they have this like crazy arc up for you to for potential. Like their their cap is so much higher than Indra rigger damage, like just so outrageously higher. Um, and they're only 210 for 12, so you can still, you can run 24 of these guys, like two units of nine, and still fit in, or two units of 12, and still fit in, like, all of your hordes, all sure. of your heroes, all of your everything. Um, and they sit in a battalion that makes it so that the enemy can't use Inspiring Presence nearby, which is pretty good. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know. Like, I'm I'm much more suspect of these guys just because I think getting them their bonus is a lot harder. They are on bigger bases. It can be more difficult to get enough of them in to actually have them achieve that stuff. But I, that being said, I don't think they're bad. I think they're a good utility unit, right? Okay. Like, because of yeah. their ability to eat spells and, and have still a decent attack profile, I think in most games it won't pop off of, as you're describing. But I think it'll still be a very useful unit. So, all right. Uh, agreed. Agreed. Yeah, I'm not saying that they're at the end all be all. I'm no. saying they're an amazingly offensive tool um, in an army that can have everything else. <laughs> sure. Sure. So, you got a loser for me? Uh, yeah. Uh, <sighs> <laughs> you sad about this loser? I am. Okay. So, on the other side is the Tomb Banshee. Now, mm. a lot of people like the Tomb Banshee. They like the Tomb Banshee because she can scream in the hero phase and potentially do some mortal wounds, which is awesome. Um, but you really need a good bravery debuff, and you're only packing like an inherent neg one bravery. And like you could stack a bunch of like endless spells, maybe, to maybe get that bravery lower, but it's gonna be hard. So like bravery bombing in this army is is a little bit more difficult than anticipated. And she's a forty wound, or if she, she's a four wound four. hero for eighty points. Um, and I'm paying eighty points for four banshees. Um, I I don't want her for eighty. Like I just I, I I look at the other heroes that I could have for eighty, and I want them instead. Sure, sure. Yeah, I'm not sure any of the. I'm not sure either of the old heroes really super stack up, right? But right. You know, I mean, the cannon wraith, he's punchy. For sixty, I mean sixty, yeah, for, yeah. I mean, because he's, he's okay, but I'm still yeah. not sure I'd end up finding space for him in the vast majority because he doesn't he doesn't have the same synergies in a lot of cases that that some of these other heroes do. Yeah, he's not worth the uh, the drop increase. Sure, that's the problem with the here the Karen Wraith. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I think that in remembering incorrectly, but is there a, a battalion where you include a Karen Wraith? I think I remember that. I might be wrong. Uh, yes, yes, the uh, Deathstalker one does. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going senile yet. No. Wait a minute. Hold on. Did I, did I somehow, did I somehow read over this whole thing, which I did, and there is a battalion called Deathstalkers. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> We're gonna talk about that later, or you want to jump into it? I mean, look, if I say Deathstalker. And you don't immediately think of, well, and you don't immediately conjure a ton of images in your mind of the movie Death Stalker. I'm sorry about your luck, but it's a ridiculous, stupid, hilarious Conan knockoff from the <laughs> '80s. And if you ever watched, uh, if you ever watched the Bard who did the the Hero Quest review, right, his channel, mm -hmm. where he did like the the very famous hero quest review is like barbarians are the best character ever. You know, if you love any, okay, they're gone. The dwarf is the best character. Okay. So this guy, he references death stalker in that video and like a hundred others. So there you go. Uh, death stalker is hilarious. Anywho. Uh, I can't believe I didn't make that connection before you said it out loud. Uh, anywho. All right. On to, on to my pick. All right. Here we go. Yep. Here's my pick for winners and losers. And they're sort of mirrors of each other. All right. Yep. And it kind of makes me sad because <laughs> I like the one model way better than the other one, but the other one is just better. Okay. Okay. So I want to talk about, I'll talk about both of them sort of simultaneously. I want to talk about blade Geist revenants. <laughs> okay. And yeah. dread scythe har Haradins. Yeah. Okay. All yeah. right. That was now, my my next two. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, okay. Blade Geist Revenants are, uh, so we're talking about, um, you're pulling five of these for 90 or 20 of them for 320. It was, by the way, that's the same in both cases, right? Both yeah. units are five for 90 or 20 yep. for 320. Okay. All right. The Revenants have a fly move of eight, one wound, four up save. Sweet stuff. Yep. Standard ethereal yep. crap, like all the ghosts. Yep. Um, these are the ghosties with the big great swords. Okay. Tiny right. little wrists and big great swords. Right. Um, and they have an ability called so their their base profile with their tomb great blade is two attacks 
at three, three neg one, one damage. So effectively they have like the elite infantry yep. profile, right? Your classic, I don't know who else has that same profile, uh, sword masters and, uh, sword masters, white lions, stuff like yeah. that. Okay. The new Namartis, right? Namarty, uh, yep. thralls or whatever. Yeah. Okay. So their special ability is you can reroll failed hit rolls for attacks made by this unit if it's wholly within 12 inches of any of any friendly spirit torments or chain ghasts. Yep. Okay. Not that impossible of a thing to arrange. Okay. Right. The the wholly within kind of sucks as always, but there's a lot of wholly within in this yes. army to be fair. Yeah. And it's reroll all failed hits, not like once. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Um, and they hit on three ups. And they hit on three ups. Yes, they had. They are one of the more, um, more accurate sort of uh, uh, units in the in the in in the game. And by the way, I like chain guests. We'll talk about them later. But anyways, um, so and then they also have an ability called whirling death, which is the real reason I love them. Okay, which is this unit can retreat and charge in the same turn. Yep. Um, in addition, add one to the attacks characteristic of this unit's tomb great blades if it made a charge in the same turn. So, like, there's no reason why if, if you were unless, like if you're in combat with somebody, you wouldn't just retreat and recharge them, right? right. So you're it's all in that situation. <laughs> weird i said you have to be in a bad situation yeah sure okay so um okay so am i coming through okay or am i you're am coming I through great we just got some very weird pauses is it uh, me no just keep going man <laughs> no i think it's vince is it? i'm letting it on vince yeah, he's, we're still going and he's not. Can you hear me right now or not? I can hear you. Yep. Okay. So the... the comp <laughs> yep. <laughs> nope. Yep. It's been... Yep, he's stuttering. Yep, totally events. You're right. Yep. Uh, yeah, and so I'm going to make this... Oh, wait, there he's... Go. No, do it, so in case I stutter. Go ahead. So the comparison, obviously, they're going to make is the Dreadside Har Herodons, which same, like, core stats... Only they're on three three attacks instead of two base. Fours and threes make one red, one damage. So they're one worse to hit. And uh, the and the more significant part about this is that their like buff is they can subtract one from hit rolls for attacks made by enemy models within three inches of this unit unless they have a bravery characteristic of six or more. So basically, what that means is that that you can ignore that ability because everything has a high enough bravery in general to um to ignore that functionally because yeah i mean i guess bravery six not but still and then the other one is uh on a six up they get damage characteristic two instead of a one on hit rolls but even that can still be armor saved out is that about accurate Vince? yeah exactly they're <laughs> yep you're still not with us. So essentially, what they are, their worst dread scythe, their worst blade geist, geist revenants that can't actually control their bonuses. Because for the blade geist revenants, you control basically everything about that. You control your placement of your heroes on whether they give you the bonuses or not, and you also control the um, whether you're retreating and charging. Where the heritants can't actually control either of their benefits. One is a random effect, and then the other is based on the stat of the enemy. So it's I assume round two, that... go. <laughs> okay. okay. Back to me? Yes. All right. Um uh the next winner I have to I have to give it to, and I know I have a lot of love for this model and it just visually, but the black coach. I mean, the black coach has just skyrocketed. Not in just terms of wounds, but in terms of in terms of the uh, not even oh, just in terms of how beautiful the sculpt is this is going to be a pleasure to put together and to and to paint but this the utility and capability of this thing is is amazing i i i've been looking at lists and strategies 
thinking of maybe riding up uh, uh, with one and uh, perhaps a um, Knight of Shrouds mounted, maybe screened by 10 Hex Wraiths and one of the Harrows. And the ability to reposition those guys if you need to certainly is possible. But the fact that it has the capability to restore some of these models, they like say, for instance, if you have a 10 man, a 10 strong unit of hex rates, those are quality uh, and expensive models and two wounds a piece. Uh, the, 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 it can, it can restore models. It can heal models. It can heal itself. It could dish out mortal wounds. And the, although the chart for it to accelerate through its levels is not great. Um, you have to roll, I think the six, oh, no, is it, is it a four up or I think it's a four up on one die for each one that's on the table. So let's just say you have one on the table. In the five-turn game, in a five-round game, you're not going to get all the way to the fifth level unless you roll really well. And you, if you have a second coach, certainly well, you roll. Gonna contribute you to roll that. three dice at every turn. But you're gonna, you're gonna, you're, you're, you're probably gonna get to level three very quickly. Two, but the first two levels, in my opinion, are the best levels. I think the first two levels. Let's see. The, the first one is where it gets its healing ability. You're gonna get that pretty quick. You're gonna get that right well, off the bat. Like, hold on, hold on, Mitch. You're rolling four dice a turn, and you need you only need four ups, and so oh, on average, you're rolling, you're rolling four dice. Yeah, I'm sorry, three dice a turn, and you're looking for four ups, and so by round two, you will have rolled six dice on average, level three in turn two. Right, by, you're gonna by, get five. I'm thinking by the first the first turn though, you're probably gonna get level two. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. By the yeah. time you, but you, it, it, the chances of you getting to level five by the end of the game, it, it, it can happen. Certainly, if you have a second coach. But I'm really interested in the first two. The first two levels, I think, were where it really shines, and you're almost guaranteed to get those really quickly. The the be able the ability to run in charge. All right, I know that the I think the next level up I think is where you can retreat in charge. Uh, you can you can uh, is four it? is retreat in charge. Okay, retreat in charge. That's nice. But the the, the ability to the first the first three the scythes. Where you can get mortal wounds, I think that's level. Is that level three? That's I think that's three. level three. Yeah. Okay, I'm going off memory. I don't have it up in front of me. Um, all those things really are uh, uh, it just. It, if it didn't even have those, I think it would be effective on the board. Look at look at the profile. Look at how many abilities and how many attacks it gets. And the cut to ta top it off. Not only could it start off initially running, moving at 14 inches. But it can. It has a ten inch shoot. It has a ten inch missile uh, attack. I mean, it, I, I love this model for two hundred and eighty points. It's amazing. It has a ten inch attack at neg three rend. And how many wounds? Is it die three? Twelve. Oh, die three. Yeah. 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 It's really good. I mean, it's it's funny because it hasn't made it into any of my list yet. <laughs> like it's <laughs> really good. Um, like the only thing that makes me sad about it is that it's not a hero. And I understand why they didn't make it a hero. Because you would you would stack it up with uh, with the artifacts. You give I it a would. trait, you make it a general, and make it a, and give it a trait, and then it would be obscene. Well, I mean, you know what the what the like who the steeds and the crew are. It's only the Karen Wraith itself is getting the item bonus or the the trait right. bonus, but still, um, still, I mean, it's like I it's really not like rend, it. multiple wounds. Yep, it's good. So let's see. In terms of losers. Um, you already mentioned, uh, the, uh, Banshee and the Cairn Wraith, so I, I'll just, I'll just double down on those, um, and, uh, and, and, and pass. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. No other losers. That's a good sign right there. Am I coming in normal now or am I yeah, you are. still? No, you're good. Sounding good. Uh, if I had to pick, if I really had to pick a, a, a loser, the only, and this is the only reason why I picked this one. It'd be the uh, the Knight of Shrouds on foot because I think the Knight of Shrouds mounted just a little bit overshadows it, but the Knight of Shrouds on foot still can have a place, still sure. for its yeah, still for its points. Yeah, as has been pointed out in the comments, by the way, with the black coach, the way it works is you. No, you're gone, Vince. Sorry, man. Uh, okay, <laughs> you want to finish yeah. your sentence? Uh, what? Yeah, what he's saying is that uh, it's three dice per hero phase per coach. Per coach, and yeah, they're all cumulative. No, they're not. No, they're not cumulative because it, like, you get three dice each coach. Uh, you know, it roll three dice for each coach on the battlefield for each uh, for that for each four plus that black coach gains a power level. Right. So it's like the three dice are tied to the black coach. It's not that you roll like six dice for two black coaches and then both of them gain those levels, which would be obscene. 
<laughs> which would be silly. And, and it wouldn't be um, a 280 point uh, unit, I'm sure. Huh. Right. I would admit I misread no that because I saw it like I didn't. I okay, that's interesting. It'd be a no brainer not to take double coaches if it did that. Is that again, Vince? Yeah. What were you saying, Vince? The that as being restricted. Yeah, the that uh, because it because it's associating each black coach with that black coach then gains a level of power. Yeah, I don't think it. I don't think they're cumulative with one another. If it if it was, it would be a no brainer to take two. Yeah, like two would be the magic number. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I mean, I think they're good. Uh, I, I think what you said, Mitch, for me, uh, I want to just tie like the nine of Strouds on ethereal seed. That dude is so well costed. <laughs> yeah. Like he's like, I love him. I love him as my general. I love him about everything that he's doing. Um, so he's my, like, he's my, he's my good pick. Um, uh, my that he's my winner. He's the one that adds the plus one attacks. Like I just I love him and everything that he's doing. He's in every list I have. Yeah, that's exactly the same. Yeah, like I know what I like by the fact that they show up in every list, and indeed he does show up in all of my lists. Um, my loser uh, is um, this may be a um, this may be a contentious one, um, but. Uh, I am not a fan of the Mortis, Terminexus, Endless Spell. I, I, I agree okay. with you. Um, which is like the time turner one that either you go forward or backward, and whoever is activating it either heals the D3 wounds to each unit within six inches, or, um, or uh, the, like each unit within six inches suffers a D3. Um, because, well, for like, I am inclined to do hordes and I would have a lot of one wound models. And so the healing would be like super limited. Um, and it's obviously, it's a non-discerning spell. And so I just, there's just something about it that I don't like, it's doing all the wrong things when I don't need it to. What's the you point? Don't even have to, uh, I don't know, like 40, I think 40 sounds right. Um, yeah, no, 60, even yeah, worse. That's what I was going to say. I thought it was 60. Um, yeah, it's yeah, just, I'm not it's in. 60. No, I'm not in. So, there you go. What do you All think right. of the Shai Reaper? Just curious. Uh, I like it. Yeah. I'm a fan of it. It's a good model. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I'm choppy, but I want to touch on a few other things. Yeah, go. Mm, no, you don't yeah, get to touch on it. You might want to I want to have a talk about the named characters. Named characters. Okay, named okay. characters. Cool. We can talk about named characters while you're okay. doing something else. Uh, let's see. Sh shall I start or you want to start? Vince, which one do you want us to do? Go ahead. O Oleander. We have to talk about the, the queen. Oh, I love Oleander. Yeah. Um, uh, go ahead, Mitch. I, th I like her more than the other two, and I, I'm really a big fan of, uh, of uh, what is his name, Curtis. Um, but... Oleander um, lifting the veil is phenomenal. Uh, you get the option for a mortal wound or a, uh, or a heal, dishing out mortal wounds or um, or doing a heal combo. Uh, you've got a range die three mortal wounds if you roll higher than bravery. Uh, you can do die th six mortal wounds uh, on enemy heroes within six inches again, or you can hit you know hear yourself. Um, let's see uh, the uh, grief stricken. I think it's called is uh, is like a double whammy. Enemy units get uh, a minus one to be uh, to hit you, uh, to hit to hit with the melee attacks, and then um, they're then they they have a minus they have a minus one to their to hits. I believe it's that's the way it works. No, so it's you do, you pick an enemy unit, they have minus one to hit. Right, that unit has minus yeah. one to hit, and all of right. your units have and plus all, one to hit. Right, and then they ha it has an AOE summoning uh, command ability. Yeah, oh, re like a return, like a healing return right. one wounded model. Yeah, like so I wouldn't you, call it a summoning, a, but but it's a, it's an area effect restoring models around yes. it. Uh, she's great. I think she's got all the goods. Yeah, I mean, she's she's okay. Um, like I like her, um, but like I got to be honest. Like if I'm including her, I want her to cast spells, right? Right, because she can cast like two spells. Yeah. She can cast two spells. 
Uh, but I have to be honest, if I'm going to include her at 240, I might almost just pay the extra 120 um, and just pick up Arkin. As an ally? Yeah. Sacrilege. I mean, because, yes, I could see that. Because I get three spells and I get plus three to cast, and I, or it's plus two to cast, sorry. And range. And yep. I get added range, and I can trigger even with this army because it's uh, non specific. Mm -hmm. And so he becomes like, and he picks up all the night haunt spells from all your wizards uh, because of the way it's written. He picks up all death spells. And so, like, Arkin is just like a power packed bundle of joy in this army. And, like, so she, in my mind, is competing with Arkin's spot. And, oh, and Arkin chooses four units to restore a D3 models to. Right. And so for her, you're spending a command point. You do one model for every mo for every unit within. You do one model for every uh, unit or every unit within 12 inches. Where Arkin's going to choose four units and restore uh, a D3 wounds. So that's either a D3 models or like maybe one hex, uh, one hex wraith or spirit post or whatever. So it depends on the type of list that you're building, which right. is going to heal more. The, but the for everything that. The, yeah. the problem with Arkin is that he's a target and he doesn't have he can't he doesn't benefit from the lookout, sir, and he goes down okay. so fast. He does. He, when he gets focused fire, he's, you don't, he's a and big you don't think she will she won't go down fast either. She'll she'll go down fast, but she at least has a, a, a four up unrendable where Arkin's uh, save is gonna get rendered at, oh, oh, you know to a five up or even a six, depending on what he's getting shot at. Um she has the ability to restore herself quicker than he has the ability to restore himself. So she may have less yeah. wounds. So yes, and, if Focus Fire could and, stop her. And but. as uh, Velotron, Velotron said, I agree, why not both? And I think that, and, <laughs> Absolutely. I think that, that, and I think that that's certainly a, a plausible possibility, is what I would say. Like, I don't think that that's a terrible idea at all. I'm not um, saying you're wrong. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying yeah, that all the cool kids are bringing Arkin, so you know. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like maybe she's Arkin's girlfriend or something. I don't know, um, but there they can drift in, be Mortark buddies. Um, I mean, what I would say is that I uh, like I just for my points, if I have to choose, I'm going to choose Arkin between the two of them. Now that said, I, I I'm not against running both of them. Um, I just need to have enough other heroes to give my artifacts to. <laughs> so. But normally that's not going to be too hard. Crazy um, combo, the two of them, though. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. So that's so, what I would say. Uh, she is my favorite by far. Let's of, see. Of the next? heroes, she's my favorite. Let's see. We got we got Kurdos. Um, I love his command ability, stealing a, a command point. It's not a command um, ability. Uh, say again? It's not a command ability. It's no, a I, ability. No, that he steals a command point. Right. Right. So I kind of I like to like her and him together only because he's a good combat. Uh, um, he he dishes some good good damage in combat, and she's going to be sitting way back. She's going to be in the backfield because they can they can split the field and and take you know different objectives and bring along you know obviously an escort with them to protect them and uh, bolster them. Uh, but uh, if I had to put them in in order, I'd go Oleander o Olinder one, Kurtos two, and. Reichnar, I don't really care for too much. He's got he's he can do a lot of damage in hand hand combat. Um, you know, he could potentially dish out what two die three mortal wounds uh, with uh, you know what is it? Um, I forget what he has that could do that. Um, he has a nice spell, you know, where he can suffer a wound and boost his casting. Um, mm -hmm. You know, he's 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 good in close combat. He has some interesting items, but I, whenever I look at him, I, I I immediately want to. I'd rather go back and take either Kurdos or or Olander. Yeah, I feel that. I mean, like the universal seven wounds across the board, I have a real hard time with. Yeah, um, but with, with other bonuses, you, that minus one to be to look out, sir, can become even better. They have a couple yeah, of relics and stuff. I mean, I hear that, but you can't have items on any of them. You can't have command right. traits on That's any of them. The point. Like, I just like I man, I have a real hard time with all the named characters. Like, if they were non-named characters, I'd be in. Um, but as named characters, I, I really, I really struggle with them. Is what that, I would say. Thankfully, they're cheap. You could fit a lot of the armies with either one or two of these. Yeah, but you could have another forty chain drafts, or you could so, have another another unit of ten um, a Mirmorn banshees, <laughs> like so, or twelve. Uh, yeah. So you're saying take the Knight of Shrouds, soup them up, 
-hmm. and uh, forget the uh, name guys. Take the uh, I, take the I, take the, the generic spellcaster or Arkin. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, what I would do is I would because because the battalion that I'm always going to run is going to include the generic spellcaster anyways. And one of the items I'll probably get gives me makes one of my guys a, a free spellcaster already. Like what ends up happening is I get two wizards for free. Throw Arkin in. I'm already at three wizards. Adding in Oleander is just not needed. Like I mean I could, but um, yeah. Anyways, so that's, feels, that's where I'm at. It feels weird to have Arkin in the. Uh, yeah, and <laughs> the, not Oleander. Like, but I but it's, I mean it's it's, it's the it's the it's the math of the situation though. Like I just find myself. He's doing the job of backfield spellcaster better than she is. I just, I just think that she's going to – I think she'll survive longer. I really do. I, I, I've seen Arkin get blasted off turn one so many times. There's so many things that can reach out and get to him uh, or strike – you know, get close enough to, to be able to dish. He goes down. Uh, he just doesn't have enough protection. All the Mortarks are really that way. Um, but, uh, you know, he's he's got – he's probably he, I, arguably the best Mortark, but – I just seem I seem disappear too fast. Yeah. All right. So cool. Sorry, I'm not able to talk. Am I still choppy? You want to hear no. you now? You're getting better. Welcome to the club, Vince. <laughs> anyway, we'll see if it restarts. It's very upsetting to me. Any? Oh, we lost him no. again. No. Oh, honorable mention, even though it's not a named character, is that Dre the? Dreadbait Hollow. I love that. Harrow. I love his Harrow, whatever they're called. Yep. Yeah, he's kind of neat. And it's yeah, it's 100 points. Does a lot for 100 points. He does do a lot for 100 points. He's only five wounds, though. Like, that's my problem with all this, is that they're really low wounds. Um, yeah, but, but you get a bunch of them. It's true. I mean, the only real trade-off here is that, like, your uh, the chain gas, the chain rasp support, sorry, you're getting like 40 for like 280, which I uh, I'm in for. Like I'm I'm really in. Uh, clearly, Relian is really in for that because that's what that's what uh, Nagash was accompanied with when he won uh, um, Midwest Bell down this last week uh, weekend. Of course, why wouldn't he? Well, yeah. you know, here's the thing. I'll say, assuming that I yeah. keep coming through. Okay, this army has an interesting. Mm. Yeah, he's, he keeps freezing. He's all grainy oh. too. When I whenever when I see him. Yeah, he probably tried to reduce the uh, pick the hit the image on his camera. That's what I'm guessing. Mm. All, right. All right, I'll talk like this. We'll see hey, if this it's a bouncing I'll, bubble now. I'll be a little. <laughs> man, Vince, <laughs> that you just can't win. Sorry, man. He needs to participate in the show anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe your phone would do better. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Um, what do we move? We should move on, or should we wait for him? We should move on. Um, move on. So let's talk about the uh, let's talk about the actual allegiance abilities uh, before okay. we jump into like the battalion stuff. Um, and so, as an allegiance abilities, what these guys are bringing, they project a negative one bravery bubble within six inches um, nice. as they want units. Um, they have deathless spirits, which is just the six plus uh, ward save. If they're wholly within 12 inches of the general or a friendly night haunt hero, man, that is so painful. It like is. it's so it's so hard to get that six plus deathless save. Especially um, with the that. 40 man models on like chain rasps. So. Oh yeah. They need to be humping a hero in order to get those uh mm. to get that wards uh, yeah. to get that six up. That's there's there's um, your there's your uh, argument for, for a can wraith. Uh indeed, indeed. Uh each for heroes, each time an enemy uh uh, unit fails a battle shock test. Pick one friendly night haunt hero within six inches of the enemy unit. They heal a wound, so there's like a little bit of hero healing. Um, uh, wave of, or let me do from the underworlds they come. They have alternative deployment, so they can deep strike at the end of the movement phase. They can set up models, and you know nine inches away, but it's like an unrestricted, so they don't have to come up near their heroes, which is nice. Um, and then the two abilities, in my opinion, that really make night haunt as allegiance abilities. The first being that on an unmodified charge roll of 10 plus the night haunt unit immediately gets to like fight, which is piling in charge Here. immediately after the charge phase before the combat phase starts. Have they clarified that you get a pile in? 
Is there been yeah, a clarification? Fighting, fighting includes, always includes, when something gets to fight, it piles in and attacks. Great. Because I've, I've, I've seen the argument about that. So yeah. I'm, I'm glad. Yeah, that, that's a good clarification. And then uh, for spectral summons, which is the command ability that all their guys get, if you, um, if you, uh, at the start of the movement phase, you can pick a night haunt, uh, unit on the battlefield, remove the unit from the battlefield, and set it up wholly within 12 inches of general, more than nine from enemy models. And I want to so, make a comment about that. The, the, yeah. the nice thing about that is that there are two of the, if you do take the other two um, named characters, you, they don't have their own command ability, but this default command ability is great. I don't yeah, know I mean, I would assume that all hero or no, all heroes get this. Is it? Would they? It just seems I don't like know. It just says it just says command ability. Um, now it only works if the general is on the battlefield. Why would? Oh, you you could actually put your general. You have to set up around the general, but technically it would work with any of because it says pick up an uh, uh, remove from the battlefield and then set up wholly within twelve inches of the general. So you always set up within the general. So it doesn't matter who gets it technically. It okay. always has to set up around the general. So, yeah. There I'm back. Go. Can you hear me okay Welcome now? Back. Yeah. It's working okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm on my phone now. That's literally hey, Vince. what we've been... Welcome back. This is what we've been reduced to, folks. Because my <laughs> internet sucks so bad right now, apparently. So, there you go. So that happened. That happened. Hopefully that's working okay. Can you hear me okay through the phone? Yeah, Any issues yeah you're fine. Great. Well, yay. Yay for my phone not being on any kind of internet, having better... Whatever. All right. So, very upsetting. Anywho, yeah, I mean, you talked about the Allegiance ability. <laughs> oh, man. Is that your... That was his air. Uh, his, is that your compressor? His airbrush it's compressor. My compressor, yes, which was still on and has a tank, and decided at this exact second that it needed air. What a world we live in! What a world! All right, yeah. That uh, I mean, I know you talked about it already, but that wave of terror is to me the reason, right? Like this is the thing that sets them apart. Yes. The the ten plus they <laughs> suddenly attack in the charge phase. It's such an explosive, unexpected, crazy good ability, um, and it can so turn things around. Yep, and it, it takes any of their units and makes them that much more effective, because that you just even even the crappiest unit you have on the table you could you, you can benefit from it just if it just happens and they get the extra free attack round. Right. Yep. Um, all right. So let's let's talk about command traits and uh, and allegiance or sorry and artifacts. You know, artifacts, spells, command traits, etc. Okay. Yeah. Um, and you know. Here's one thing I'll say, okay? Well, let me, I'll put this out there for you first. Are there any of the command traits you're in love with? Uh, Rule of the Spirit Host. Yep, that's that's the one that I look at and go, yeah, that's yep. really good. That's number one. Maybe Cloak of Shadow, but I would definitely take Rule of the Spirit Host as my number one. Yep. I would argue that's, like, the only one. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. yeah. Sure. I I literally can't imagine the situation where I take any of these other ones over rulers of the spirit hosts, right? Right, because right, right. There's quite a lot of these units that are actually summonable, right? Like it's mm. not. I mean, I know they have spirit hosts as the mention, but like, there's quite a lot of summonable units actually in this force. Yeah. Okay. Like a majority of it. Yeah, and. You know, as is pointed out with the spirit host thing, where they're a multi wound model, right, that's coming back, um, or hex hex wraiths, which are a multi wound model mm -hmm. that's coming back, right? Um, this is such a versatile ability, and it's D3 slain models, right? Uh, yeah. So, like, spirit hosts, like, three wound models jump back very quickly. Yeah. They're still yeah. viable in this. That even though they're not a new unit, still very viable. Yeah, and like this with Olander, you know, even even though she can't have this, like if somebody nearby had it, like you're getting a D three plus one spirit hosts or hex race or whatever back per turn. Yeah, that's nothing to pick at. If you to have me, one max unit of spirit hosts, it's gonna be hard yeah, to take it away. Sure. 
to me, this is like such an auto take that everything else on the table doesn't matter. And it's the best reason not to have a named character as your general, right? Because mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't want that's actually a super good ability. Um, yep. Because they don't, again, they don't have to be wholly within nine inches. Any tail touching within nine of your general, boom, D3 dudes back, right? Um, yep. The fact that it's actual models, to me, it is just, it is the command ability. And the rest yes. are like, whatever. Yep. And the, name guy, the named characters don't have to be general. They don't have that requirement. Right? No, no, they don't, and and that's fine. It's like I'm okay with that. That's I'm not. I'm just saying like it's it's not an argument totally against the name characters. It's just an argument that <laughs> it's hilarious to me that this is the only war target that's not forced to be the general if she's in the army. Well, you know, there you go. She uh she's she's willing to let some other people have a chance. Okay, she doesn't stick as much. She, she's in a uh, she's a, in a delegation. She's a delegated yeah. war tark. Um, sure. All right. So let's talk about spells. Uh, yep. We'll do spells next. All right. Um, their spells are, for the most part, you know, they have a, a decent range of easier to cast spells. That is to say, they've got a couple different fours, a couple different sixes. Yeah. Right. There's only uh, one that's seven. One seven. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll go around again. What is your what's your spell choice here? Right. Obviously, we should state like obviously the lore of the underworlds is you get one of these for every wizard in your army, right? So mm -hmm. okay, everybody's mm -hmm. picking one of these. Um, and our normal sort of limitation on spells says we're probably not going to stack them too much because we can't, right? You know, we can't multicast them. Um. So, what do you like within this list? Because I, I have a hot pick. I, I know what your hot pick is, and it's going to be mine, too. Mitch, go ahead. Uh, I, I kind of like Life Stealer. Um, you know, there's a couple that I think they're, they're not, none of these are just are strike me as, oh my God. You know, they, they, they seem to be pretty, pretty uh, there's a couple that are pretty good. Yeah, you're like you're shaking your head there. Um, no, there's a winner. Like as and this is what Vince is getting at. Oh, there is right a winner. winner in this list. Let's get, get, and that get, is let's get right Cage. to the winner. Soul Cage. Soul okay. Cage wins. And here's why. It does two things and two things that are very important that will turn a oh, game. Oh, the locking right. up. Got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One is that it makes units not be able to retreat. Yep. That is so huge. Remember those Drake Egan F lists we were talking about with like, oh, well, I'm going to dance around and I'm going to retreat every round and get plus one to hit. No, you're not. You don't get to go anywhere. More yeah. importantly, do you not get to go anywhere is that you don't get to fight until all my stuff has hit you in the face. Yep. You're exactly right. Yep. Yeah, I mean, yes. Like, the, the most powerful thing about household within Sylvaneth to me was always its ability to shut off retreat. Right. Right. And the fact that that spell can do that and more and all of that on a six, I dig it. It's I really so good. It. it is I so good. Is the spell. Like if I if I had to pick a second one, you know, gun to my head, right? Okay, I'm going to pick yep. my second spell, right? Um, then I guess like Spirit Drain is funny because it can do damage to a big model, you know, who yep. like like. Star Drakes and stuff, you pick them and you roll it can be like spiky. Yeah, you can roll like fifteen or sixteen dice and get some mortal wounds through. It's it's a good way to deal with big giant stupid models that have a ton of wounds, right? Because you're yep. roll, you're picking a single model and you get a number of dice equal to their wounds characteristic. So yep. most notably, not their current wounds, right? Their wounds characteristic, which is a static thing, right? right. So like the war mammoth, you get to roll twenty two dice. <laughs> okay. I mean, you're still only getting like three or four mortals out of it because it's only on a six plus. Yep. But yep. whatever. It, it, the other one, I mean, yeah, the rest of them are just like shade yeah. mist. Mediocre. Shade mist is okay because it gets minus one to wound rolls for attacks that target that unit. I mean, that's cool. It's good. Like, there's a lot of ones that I'm just like, okay, that's cool. You know, yep. like I can see that. But but my first thing I'm doing most games is is soul caging people, especially because now I'll make the point that I was trying to make earlier. This army has the capability to have a lot of little tiny floating, uh, like 
power centers. When yes. you look at like chain gas, they have a diverse power leaders. center. Yeah. Yes. Like other than the big hordes of chain rasps floating around. Yes. Right. There tends to be a lot of units of, of like that might be in sizes of like four or two or eight or you know just like it it can it can several builds of this will feel very MSU. Yes. Right. And in an MSU situation, one of the big challenges you run into is you put like three units into one unit. Okay, you go, you do some damage, and then they go and they blow your other two units away. Right? Sure. Yeah. Um, but Soul Cage says, no, no, <laughs> right? Soul Cage says, I put three units into you. I get to reap the benefits of all three of those units before you fight, right? Um, this was like such a stupidly good ability when it was the Forest Dragon's three plus breath weapon way back in the, in the first launch, yes. right? Yes. Like indeed. that's what this was. And I loved the crap out of it. And it was so mind-bogglingly powerful to make people wait till the end of combat to fight. Um, and now you just get to do this. Right. Now, you know, uh, the interesting part about this is you do have to be a little careful because it's not exactly the same ability. And like, right. our, I can't see the comments anymore. So I don't, you know, our viewers are probably busting us on this. But I want to I wanna put a fine pin on this, okay? Yep. That unit can't fight in the combat phase unless all other enemy units that are eligible to fight have already done so. Yeah. If they were the only unit that could fight that was engaged, then it would still go in the normal order, right? It would go yeah, me, yeah. your one unit, and then my two units. Yep. But obviously, you should be setting this up to have it so that unit, so that you get to attack with all your guys first, right? Like, yeah. That is a notable distinction I want to put a pin on. I am yep. assuming that you have also engaged them elsewhere and forced yep. those other units to go, right? Yep. So that you can yep. actually wail on the unit you've put this spell on, right? And you've taken that choice away from them. So yep. anyway, the fact that it does that and stops retreat just to me makes it such a great choice. But Shade Mist is fine. Spirit Drain is fine. Life Stealer is kind of fine. It's too high. It needs to be a six, not a seven. But I like that it, you know, yep. heals the caster. I, I like that Arkin can do it and heal himself. <laughs> he needs it. You can't rely sure. on that. Just his normal, yeah. you know. Like it's not restricted to uh, night haunt heroes, and so he ends up like some of the them like are restricted to night haunts, but he can still heal himself with it. So that was nice. So, but uh, yeah, in general, like there's a standout and then everything else is kind of, eh. yeah, although this is better than command traits because like, I mean, given it doesn't matter as much in command traits because you're only going to ever have one, yep. you know, so like one good one's fine in spells. You're going to have more than one, you know, being picked. Yep. So yep. It, it's fine. Like if I had to rate it, I'd put soul cage at like a solid seven or an eight. And then there's a couple other, like, you know, solid sixes or five and a halfs or whatever, something like that, you know, and, and that's fine. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, items. Items. Yes. Items. Uh, so we've Winners got, and leaders. Yeah. yeah. We've got a couple different groups of items, obviously, between the relics and infernal lanterns and and the actual weapons. Uh, um, yeah. I like the so headsman's... We can cover this all at a clip. I like the headsman's that? judgment. I like the headsman's judgment. Really? Yeah. I, uh, I haven't. Room. I haven't. I'll tell you right now. I haven't even looked at the uh, the lanterns. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I would say that there's there are three items that win here, and everything sure. else on a pass. Uh, Shadow's Edge is my weapon of choice. Okay. On a natural six roll to hit, unmodified, you do a D three mortals. Um. Yeah. And I. I because. I, I... I have a slight concern with that, but I'll let you go ahead and then I'll make my point. There's just not a lot of good heroes to put it on. Like, your best heroes have four attacks. You um, you just made my point for me. Thank you. I know. I know. <laughs> like, yeah, like, I, I get it. I get it. Um, but uh, it a D3 Mortals is still going to, like, you know, out of four attacks, you are you could you could reasonably land two sixes. It's not unusual to do that. And Giga, five wound hero, before, like, anything else starts. Um. So I like that sword. Um, I like the Midnight Tome to make one of my guys a wizard that's not normally a wizard. I'm yep. a fan of that. 
that's and I, I would always do that rather than like increase the casting of my uh my dude than my uh my normal guy simply because uh i'm, I'm like i'm probably gonna be running arkin probably who is going to be like you're going to want more casters to gain bonus spells so that arkin gets more spells <laughs> And so you get more bonus stuff, and you'll you'll do that that way. So Midnight Tome is going to be my pick, and then finally the Beacon of Nagashaz Shazar, which basically whenever you cast Spectral Lure, which is basically the only like non named hero spell you have, it's on the guy with the lantern, uh, the uh, not Spirit of Torment, but the uh, I'm blanking on his name, uh, the Guardian of Souls. Yep. Um, he he's gonna like he'll do a D, he'll return or heal D six, um, oh. and what this does is this makes it D six plus three. Yep. If you're in the battalion, it becomes two D six plus three, which, which is, is a ton. Yeah, and, and let me tell you. So that that leads right to my thought, which is this: I don't like any of the um, the weapons. <laughs> okay. You're right. Sure. 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 Uh, the weapons are all like to me. Um, I don't hate any of the lanterns, okay? Right, yeah. I would put the, the Harvest Moon one the lowest, but that being said, re-rolling all failed hits in a bubble once mm -hmm. a game, if, if you're going to go in for a big alpha strike, That's is not a big deal. bad. But the trick is lining it up, so because they have to be wholly within 12 of the bear when they attack. So like you've yeah. really got to be making everything fit properly here. Which isn't yep. necessarily going to be easy. I mean, plus one to cast rolls is always good. Like always, always, always for a hundred reasons, yep. right? Yep. Um, so that's fine. Um, I don't hate the pendant of the fell wind, which is a, a three inch move. It adds three inches to the moves to a force that is already super fast. Making your hex wraiths move fifteen, and your you know, which makes it easier for them to roll over people. Yep. Making yep. all your eight inch flyers go to eleven inches. I mean, it's a big difference. And the trick is they only have to be wholly within at the start of that normal move. Like they can then yep. leave, you know, yep. so you can send them off somewhere and then float him wherever you need him to be. Right. Yep. Um, and obviously, by the way, the, the, the bearer themselves get that. Right. Yep. So depending on who you put it on, like there's a lot of 12 and four, there's like 12 inch, you know, mover dudes, um, like your mounted knight of shrouds or whatever is 12 or 14 or whatever. So suddenly he's going, you know, pretty zippy quick. Yeah. Um, and the, uh, you know, the cloak of the waxing moon, like, okay, cool. Five up <laughs> death proof save is pretty good. Yeah, it's weird and differently. It says instead of six up, but it's not talking about mortal wounds. Um, correct. It's, it's only wounds inflicted by melee weapons. You go to five up. It's yeah. not mortal wounds. It's, it's not, not a universal. Weapon. Yeah. It's just wounds inflicted by melee weapons, which is why I don't like it a lot more, right? Like, normally True. moving your six up, feel no pain, to a five up is actually, like, one of the strongest things you can do. But Because heroes not always that. give themselves that ability, but it's not that. Um, yep. Yeah, but I mean, like, to me, it's, the, I agree, it's the tome, the pendant, and then, like, the lantern the things for your yeah. casters. Yep. And I would just skip those weapons. Like, I'll tell you this. Most of these aren't good enough. I'm not going to the realms to get my first item. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, that's right. You know, like, I, that's that's just simply the case. There are still, even post-nerfs, much better options in the realms for your first item. You know? Yeah. Like, yeah. easy, dumb example here, okay, is the Shrieking Blade. Subtract one from hit rolls for attacks made with melee weapons that target the bearer. Okay. Cool story, bro. Or I can go get the stupid Griff Feather charm, which adds one inch to my move and adds and is neg one to be hit by anything, not just melee or missile weapons. So right. yeah, but isn't that isn't it up for debate whether those are gonna be included? Not really. I don't I haven't seen anybody talk about the realm no? artifacts. Okay. No, that, well, I, no that, that's universally accepted. Like well, that's then, what the talk is. And that's yeah. like an auto include for any army, that one. I mean, it's one Maybe. of the better ones, but that's my point. Like, you know, there's there's probably still, even after the culling <coughs> of the FAQ, there's probably still what seven or eight solid choices at least in that list. Yep. yep. That are better than anything in this list. Yep. So yep. like, okay. 
So for your second artifact, which one, you know, it's like, which one of these are you taking? All right, great. Sure. You know. Yeah. Okay, battalions. Battalions, yeah, sure. <clears throat> uh, uh. Well, obviously, uh, Death Stalkers is the best battalion <laughs> because it is called Death Stalker and it's referencing <laughs> Death Stalkers. So it's the best battalion. Nothing else matters. That's the, chair, that's the Karen Wraith one. H hard pass. Hard yeah, pass. I, would, no, I wouldn't take it. I don't like that I, one at all. I like I like the execution horde and the chain guard. Yeah, I'm. I'm uh, Death Stalkers is I actually know. terrible. Like it's straight terrible. <laughs> it's, it's 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 got a good name. It does um, have the sweetest of names. I will say, like I like the execution horde. I just wouldn't ever run it. Well, um, it, 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 I like it because it uh, because I like the idea of making like an executioner neg three to hit. Yeah, like that makes me smile inside. But at the end of the day, he's still a three wound hero that's going to get mortal wounds spelled off the table. He's not um, three, and, but I know what you mean. You mean or if he's a five wound hero that's going to get mortal wounds spelled off the table. Like that dude is not lasting long. Um, chain guard? What's your opinion? I love chain guard. Uh, chain guard is my go to. Yeah. Uh, which, by the way, uh, uh, call out uh, to GW for pimping their um, their special edition. Um, Guardian of Souls. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. The, if you look in the background, uh, the Guardian of Souls that it it is modeling there is the one from uh, like stores when they have their birthday. It's not yeah. the default model. Like you can only get that from GW stores occasionally on their yeah, birthday. What's, what's with this limited edition bullshit? And he has a different <laughs> so, spell. We're all just going to convert it. FAQ. Yeah. Yes. We're all going to convert one. Uh, so kudos to them. That's why it says spectral or, or temporal trans translocation spell because he has the temporal translocation spell. Um, but uh, chain guard is by far my favorite. Like it's my go-to um, for battalions. Like it's where I would start any army that I would build um, for these guys. I would start with 80, 80, um, 80 ghosts. Uh, ghosts. And like 80 chain rasp, like two hordes of chain rasps and a guardian of souls covers to your battle line. It's these, these huge uh, foot slogging body things. And with him uh, that makes this guy, all of his spells heal 2d6. Yeah. And so crazy. that's pretty good. And then uh, if I really wanted to push it, I would give it to give him the lantern to go 2d6 plus three. And because I'm including Arkin, it could go to 2d6 plus a d3 plus 3. And if I include the the general, it goes to 2d6 plus 2d3 plus 3. So have fun grinding through those guys. <laughs> sure. But that's just it. Um, it's, a, it's a big grindy grind fast, right? Right. Which, okay. And it's like a couple hundred points. <laughs> like at the end of the it's day, a like more it's more like, than that, but sure. Uh, like uh, five, like what? 560, 700, uh, 820. So it's 820 for, um, for two of your battle line and one hero you're going to include, anyways. And so then that gives you another like 1100, 1180 to do with what as, as you will. Sure. See, I, I'll tell you what. I like Death Riders, and I'll tell you why I like Death Riders. I was just going to go... You're out of your mind. No, it's a fun one. It's not going to be competitive, in my opinion. That's really not better than that the, the chain the chain um, guard. But it's Obviously, a fun one. Obviously, things that spam out the dumb chain rasp boards are great. Now, let me tell you why I like Death Riders. Okay? Yep. So, Death Riders requires the the uh, Black Coach. What I would, yep. I would argue you're probably going to have in your army anyways. Okay? In, in many cases. Not always. But often, that's all I'll say. Okay, it's a good model, okay. does a lot of stuff, whatever. Okay, okay? you've got to have a dreadblade, Haro guy, right, or whatever. One to two of them is what you can have. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I I good. would never feel one, but sure. I I think he's fine as a leader for hundred points. I don't think he's the worst thing in the world. Whatever. Hundred points. And then you've got to have uh, what is it? Two units of hex rates, right? That's that's yep. the Achilles heel. Well. Uh, I mean, so I don't think so. Like, first of all, hex wraiths are battle line choices. Okay, so they're it's yep. doing some purpose. It's eight thirty for the battle of uh, the battalion men, men. Correct. Yep, one hundred thirty. Right. This isn't this isn't necessarily a cheap prospect. No. What's that? 
for the whole thing, it's 8.30 minutes. Okay, got it. Yes. Cool. Thank you for doing the math. I appreciate it. It's, except for the Dreadblade hero tax, which I would argue you're right. He's probably not going to be included. He's kind of the thing. But I can easily see you having an army where you're paying off two of your battle line spots with hex rates. Okay? Yep. And where you've got a black coach. Yep. And if, if that was the army you're going to have anyways, Death Riders is pretty amazing. Because two things it does. One, it gives everybody in there plus one to charge, right? And, and as was we mentioned in the Allegiance abilities, this is an army that can set up half its stuff off the table and then pop up anywhere nine inches away, right? right. So moving a charge from needing to roll a nine when you pop up to needing to roll an eight is a pretty big deal, okay? Even if you don't do the pop-up trick, the fact that these guys are so fast... Like, all these units are fast, right? Every one right. So you could just set up as normal and land much... Like, plus one to charge is a big deal. It's, as somebody who plays an army that frequently has plus one to charge, I'm shocked by how often just plus one matters, right? But the fact that you could also... You have that reroll command ability now. A rerollable eight is insanely statistically mm -hmm. more likely than a rerollable nine. Sure. Okay? In addition... This also moves the 10 up I fight in the charge phase to a 9 up. Yeah. It's great. I mean, it's good. But I'm not going to say it's not. The, the problem that I have with this one is that I don't. Oh, wait. Are you still going, Vince? No, no, no. That's oh, it. Okay. My argument is basically this it's worth the 230 points to me, which is the tax of the Dreadblade Harrow and the Battalion, to get. To put all the rest of that stuff that I was going to use anyways into a drop, an extra artifact, an extra command point, and making them all much more valuable in playing the role they're actually going to play on the battlefield, which is ramming them down somebody's throat. I agree with all those points. This is the problem that I have with this one. This is why I, w I probably won't take it very often. I'll take it to have fun with it because it is, it's got some great elements to it. I don't like the idea that you need two units of hex race, and here's why. I don't think hex race work very well when it's only five models, and I think they get they can eat, get removed way too easily. Yes, there's a lot of ways to restore models, but hex race five of them they can, a little, just a little bit of focus fire they're gone. A unit of ten, it has a lot more resiliency. Certainly, obviously, ten's bigger than five, but there's just it's just much harder to to, to erase them off the battlefield. And I don't like taking up two of my uh, my my battle line slots with five man units of hex rates. I, and if you're going to spend the the needed points to go and bring them both up to ten, that's that's a lot of that's a lot of extra points that you're dumping into those in, into in, into this battalion. And there's other things I think that, that this battalion needs uh, to be effective. There's no uh, there's no casters. Um, you know, there's I mean, there's a lot of other stuff that I think you need to include, and you're you're, you're draining your points in order. To, to qualify otherwise I, I i agree with it it's it's got some great abilities absolutely it's just i think it's a more of a tax i wish that it was just one unit of hex rates and maybe something else but uh, we can't get you can't always get what we want sure yeah i, I don't mean, know man i like hex race as a chaff unit honestly because they're super mobile they can fly around and be chaff wherever i need them to sure they're on a long enough base i can daisy chain them out and you know make a line of them i'll still conga five hexes and just pull them off the end that's fine who cares like somebody slays one and pulls off one extra or two extra because of the you know the incoherency rule. <laughs> All right. I've seen a lot you of know, modest I mean, like, spells and shooting that's just eliminated five hex rays though. Sure. I, yeah, but that's that's why I like them at five. Yeah, they're he's saying they're chaff. chaff. They're good chaff. Right. So you, why are you, yeah. Because they're throwaway chaff. They're not. I. They're not a. I don't. I don't think they're ultimately a hammer in that. Like I don't know if they're ever a hammer. <laughs> like I don't know, man. No, they're not. I mean, what I would say is this. If I'm going to go for a second battalion, because that's what this is to me, like I'm going for a chain card. Which I'm, like, not, which I'm not arguing with. I think it is that, yeah. like, my argument is this is your second battalion. Yes. Yeah, and that's fine. Like, I'm not going to anchor in those, like, if I'm going to second battalion. Like, I'm not going to go, I'm like, I hear that. If I'm going to go a second one, I'm going to go to the Shrieker host every day of the week. You're out of your Maybe. mind. This gets my vote for worst. <laughs> yeah, well, that's fine. I want to make sure I know um, what I'm talking about. So the Shrieker host, 
So I would use basically everything in that battalion that aren't the Mirmorn as chaff. Oh, I knew you would pick that. And so to me, that's like 260 points of chaff, which is less than the 320 of chaff that you've paid for with the hex race. Okay. Uh Um, And it, it gives me my two units of 12 Mirmorn for 210 each. And though, and what those, and what those units are doing now, they're forcing enemies to reroll battle shock rolls of one, and inspiring presence can't be used near near the units that I want, where I would want those effects to be, which is on my damaging units. Yeah. Okay. I like all I see with this battalion is tax. I'm not arguing that it's not a good. First of all, I think you overvalue Mirmors. Let me just say that I think those things will okay. die so fast. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And I think they'll come back just as fast. I, if they're big units, yes. 12. I mean, at 12, like, you got to do 24 wounds to wipe them off the table. No, and I've got to do 12 wounds to wipe them off the table. I understand you're saying four of Renless. I'm right. saying 12 mortal wounds seem to remove them pretty quick. Right. And if you're going to do dwell, oh, dump sorry. 12 mortals. Statistically, I'm sorry, 14. Yeah. They have a six up if they're near. They have a six up, yeah. If but if you're going to dump that many mortals into a 210 point unit, okay. Yeah, I, I I'm happy to if you if it's if it's yeah. as killer as you're saying it is. Yeah, that's a great but, investment, and I made the right choice because who gives a crap about the points in the end? If I killed your hammer, then yeah, I just made the right call. But you still have more points for other hammers, but sure. Uh, and, and secondly. Like this unit, those Dread Scythe Herodons, I just think are bad. Like, I like they are. Like they're five for ninety. They're five for ninety. But again, hex. Uh, but the um, the hex race are five for one sixty. Uh-huh. Ten wounds. So you're so you're getting ten wounds for one eighty versus ten wounds for one sixty. Okay. Like, yeah. so, and I'm only, but so I'm viewing basically the two units of Herodons equivalent to one unit of Hex Rates. That's and the I'm point. And a unit that has much more use if it just literally runs around the board. Like, that's all they've got to do. Like, sure. That's all Hex Rates need to do is just run around the board, and they have the mobility to do that. Sure. Again, this is if I was going to do a second battalion. I probably wouldn't sure. do that. I probably would just take the drop hit and put two Mirror Morn in and not pay the tax. Sure. Right. That's that's probably the better answer, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've run the number. Like, I've bu- built a bunch of lists. I've run the numbers. Most of the time, I almost always go for only one battalion and go to, like, five drops, five, six drops. Sure. Do you have any one-drop lists for uh, Night Hunt? No. no, you can't get I don't get think you can drop. do it. Yeah. No, it's not possible. Nope. You, can't, you can't even get two or three. I mean, they're no. on the new battalion, like, you know, sort of. The, yeah, like, you can't do it on uh, on Stormcast either. Um, Stormcast are going to be between five and seven drops with oh. one battalion. Yeah. Like, Stormcast can't get to one drop any. Like, in general, they are moving to one drops. And, spoiler, if you have an army that has a one drop, don't be surprised in the next year if that one drop goes away. Um, like, I would not be surprised if they recycle some battle tomes. They release some battle, re release battle tomes with uh, updated to the new battalions. That would not surprise me in the least bit. So, because it's it's such a different design, it's a different design decision. Go ahead, Vince. Sorry. Sure. Like obviously, Iron Jaws famously have two one drops, right? They have two different right. one drops, right? Um, if 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 my payoff is that I get a whole new battle tome and they add like five more units to the army, all right, man. So darn, you got me with that right. one. Like, I, you mean I have to be on parity with everybody else on drops, but now I have like an actual army's number of units and options. Okay, way to hit me where it hurts. Yeah. Right. No, and I agree with you. I agree with you, Vince. Like I, but I, I think that like I think their hope will likely be that um, they'll want to bring everybody up to two point Sure, that's fine. And and for a lot of the battle tomes, that's not a hard jump. Like that's not a hard leap. Yeah. So. All right. So that's that's battalions i mean I, the other ones i think are probably worth but like there's a couple we didn't mention but i'm not sure they're worth mentioning not, yeah so they're not honest. that great um okay uh shrieker host my god all right <laughs> i hate that thing so much i, I mean 
By the way, comments below if you think I'm totally wrong and Tom is totally right. I accept that I may very well may be, but you know, I I can't stand it. Um, I mean, it's full of units I don't like that much. That and that's fine. Again, being able to negate their ability to give battle shock immunity kind of a big deal. I, yeah, I guess. Turn so, turning off demons ability. No, it turns off like inspiring presence, which right. all the good armies don't rely on for battle shock immunity, anyways. Well, okay. I mean, again, and then the the ability to force the rerolls of one on battle shocks, like, sure. like, haha, take that demons and and the Zinch. order armies where no one runs on a one. I guess. Sure. Because <laughs> because those exist somewhere. I mean, oh. like, okay. But or plus one to charge with three units, like. Yeah, I'll take the plus one to charge and the automatic fighting in with the. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. So anyway, I think it's just a shame, Tom. What we both have to admit is it's a shame we don't just have one battalion that's like Miramore and Banshees and the Black Coach and some uh, like maybe yeah, something please. else that gives <laughs> yeah, a plus please. one to charge. And yeah, uh, no, right and right. no, it would have been like the Miramore, the uh, the Chariot, the uh, okay. Black Coach. And then, like a, I don't know, pick one like a Knight of Shrouds on Ethereal Steed. There you go. Like that would have been perfect world. Yeah, yeah <laughs> absolutely. That's what we can lament that that one doesn't exist. Yeah. Or, or there you go. Uh, the coach, a couple of Miramorn, in any number, any of the named characters. Sounds good. <laughs> I'd throw them in. Like if they were in a battalion, I, I'd easily throw them in in a battalion that I'd want to run. Obviously. Well, there's, there's there's one that has Reichnor, but it's not a good one. Uh, hence the, I said, a battalion I would right. want to run. <laughs> One that's not bad. Yes. yes. All right. And okay. again, like, just to be clear, like, I, like, I have a very high bar for what I'm going to run. Um, in general, like, I found that this book is just very casually fun to run. Yeah. Like, I have bought an entire Nighthaunt army to play with my kids. <laughs> and, and like because it's because it's a fun easy army that i can roll up put some models on the table and it's balanced there's no really super overpowered models on the table so right. like you know like when i was playing with the kids and like i was playing my spider fang and i put an arachnorok because i had a bunch of like stupid spiders in the arachnorok and the arachnorok just wrecked shop with anything it touched um and and i felt the tension of like the, where are my big models is what they wanted to know. Um, they had equal points, but they didn't have any big smashy things. And so thus began the conversation where my kids tried to convince me to buy a Star Drake. Um, with that <laughs> didn't happen. Uh, but uh, I say that, I, yeah, exactly. I say that to say that like with this army, it's just a fun army that has, it's very balanced and it has some heroes and they're knight and they're great models and they're easy to paint and they're effective and they could be very competitive. Like, I'm not saying that these are like tier one skewing the meta tier S or whatever, but they're, but it's a good army. And I think yeah. that it's going to take some tournaments. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't see it. I don't, I agree with you. It's not tier one, but I think that a good general could, could make it way over, overachieve. Um, well, and to put it in the terms we did with Rob, cause I really like the way Rob sort of thought about this. Yeah. I, I think it is. I think this army is definitely a four trending five. Right. Yeah. Four, four and a half. Yeah. Yep. At, out of five. Yeah. Like, out of five games. games at a tournament. Can, so, so the way this, this system works is, is assuming you're playing the army sort of to its fullest against the average field, how many games at a tournament could it win? Got it. Right. Like it's not going to get automatically zone. Like it's not going to auto lose to, you know, one army. Right. right. Average. Well, it's got, a, it's got a lot of answers for a lot of different, uh, different problems. And yep. it, it poses a lot of problems that other people are going to have to adjust to. I, I like the versatility of the army more than anything else. And the mobility, I never expected a, a death army to be this mobile and, and versatile. Yeah. It, it's, yep. it's, it, it really gives you everything that you need there. I do. Uh, I don't know if we've, we've hit upon it, but I do like bringing some of these units onto the legions of the cash too. Um, but uh, I, I'm, really, I'm really enamored with Nighthawn as it is. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, wish I, the Mirmorn. Go ahead. <laughs> I've already done the numbers, and I was like, "Can I bring Mirmorn into the Gosh? Like having yeah. the Gosh, some chain rasts, and then Mirmorn." And I was like, mm, "I like that." Bringing them back, like two hundred and ten points, bring them back, kill a Mirmorn unit, and have 
you know, have a general whip them out of a graveyard. But uh, alas, that's uh, that's not going to happen. Makes me really sad. So, so let's do this as we're about to crest the three hour mark on this one. Oh my God! Uh, really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I didn't even that's notice. Fine. That's fine. Let's um, let's talk about uh, our sort of let let's get our final thoughts out here. Okay. Yep. Uh, and and let's let's bring this to a close because I think we've we've gotten through a lot of the the different issues here. Um. I just realized that I'm sitting here in like world star mode because I wasn't watching myself on the screen. Uh, so I've been, and I apologize. Here. Hey, there you go. Now I'm not doing world star anymore. Sorry about that for everybody who had to put up with me holding my phone vertically. My God. Yes. Um, at any rate, uh, overall, I, I like the army a lot. I think that it, uh, I like most of the units. The aesthetics are top notch. I think it has answers to most things. And, I, and as I said at the top, I like how it skews the meta in an interesting way. Numbers beat it, right? That is to say, like, all their staticky, like, four-up saves that never get better. Volume of attacks. Like, what's that? Volume of attacks. Yeah, exactly. Quantity has a real quality against this army, right? Yeah. Like, witch elf swinging into you and blowing through you with, like, 120 attacks are a real nightmare for you. <laughs> it's like... You can you can four up all day long. Like they don't need mind razor and all that crap to shred your unit, right? Like right. that's just as They're they going to cut like, you down. Yes. You. Um. So it's it's very interesting because they do ignore things like you know a lot of armies that pay a lot for uh for Ren that this army just goes <laughs> whatever man you can take that number and go go over there. Because I don't need it. So, overall, I, I dig them. I think they're a great addition, and I like the influence they put on the meta right now. That's what I'll say. That's good. Mitch, uh, Tom, any closing thoughts? I, I have one closing thought, and that is I think that the, they're, they're fun to paint. I think that they're relatively easy to paint for the average painter. I think for an excellent painter, they can be made to look amazing. I've seen some pictures... That are I'm just jealous at the capability of what people have done already. But even the modest or even mediocre paint jobs, it still looks like a pretty good army, and that's that says a lot. You can get this army on the table with a lot of ease. Yeah, totally agreed. Yes, like I've seen so many people have nearly finished armies here. You know, like in the first couple of weeks, which I love to see. People are not afraid to paint these; they're getting them done. Uh, at the same time, the I saw Richard Gray's. Um, oh God, that was gorgeous. Uh, what, right, the, the right name, guy, his name eludes me. Thank right you. Right yeah. yeah, and it's stupidly amazing. Oh, so, like, God. yes, it, it adapts to your the level you want to take it to, right? Which is a which is great. That's always a wonderful situation. Yep. So much like the other half of this starter box, the Stormcast, it's, it's the same sort of thing, right? One recommendation: get a lot of little plastic things that you can help with the fiddly bits and customize your bases because <laughs> these things are going to break. Um, I mean, maybe. Uh, what I would say is, by the way, even though you're technically getting like 10 push to fits, um, you're actually getting 11. Because like you get a half a ghost that's like customizable two ways. And like they're just ghosts. So you can like the thing that slots into the base is on one of uh, is on both of the two fronts. So like you can just turn that half of a ghost into a ghost. Which, really, which, which unit is this? This one of these stars? Like the chain rasps. The chain rasps. Everybody's hate, hating on. So even though you get like quote ten for you know forty dollars or whatever, you're actually getting eleven for what it's worth. Yeah. When my point was that I have like a pack of like thirty or forty of these like gravestones. And yeah. They're really easy to get, and th these guys they're 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 ghosts, and you could just you can you can add some support to them with a lot of different things, a lot of different elements, fences, the jar garden of more. I've seen a million people doing that with all in, all under. Um, you know, it might be a good thing to do if you're if you're concerned about the fiddliness uh, because of that one point connection that a lot of these have, um, like the executioner. I like the spindly stuff at the back. I glued it. Uh, I, I kind of it, it was able to kind of hook underneath, and then I glued that. It doesn't look any different, and it's a lot more supportive with that extra point. Anyway, that's my last point. Love the army. Yeah, very happy with yeah. it. Yeah, agreed. I love it. Like I said, I bought a new one. It'll be fun. <laughs> All right. Well, I apologize for having to shoot part of this for my phone. That's terrible. Uh, I'll call the cable company <laughs> tomorrow. You are a terrible person. 
Yeah. Uh, but I'm glad. Thank you, Tom and Mitch, for carrying so admirably there while I had to be silent for a little while. It's much appreciated. Thank you to everybody who put up with that. The air, the time of world star there when I had my phone vertically. I apologize. Wasn't thinking. And uh, for all of you who watched and made it through, I hope this was informational, helpful about the night haunt. Uh, overall, cool army. Mitch, pleasure as always, buddy. Good to have you back on the show. Always a pleasure to be here. Anytime you, anytime you, uh, you need a, a guest, just give me a yell. Absolutely. And as always, we thank you for watching, and we'll see you next Wednesday.